This is the Rogi Report News on the Fringe FM. I'm Jess Rogi. The Antarctic Peninsula is one of the fastest warming regions on Earth. The peninsula's two major glaciers, the Thwaites Glacier and the Pine Island Glacier, are retreating towards the mainland faster than new ice can form, revealing the continent's coast a little more each year. The retreating ice revealed an uncharted island that has long been buried underneath the ice, but finally visible above sea level for the first time. Researchers with the International Thwaites Glacier Offshore Research Project discovered the island while sailing off the coast of Pine Island Glacier. The small island is only about 1,150 feet long and mostly covered in ice, but rises from the sea with a brown rock distinct from the surrounding glaciers and iceberg. Researchers have tentatively named the uncharted outcropping Sif Island, after the Norse goddess associated with Earth. According to UFO researcher Diane Tessman, the author of Future Humans and UFO says the USS Nimitz Tic Tac UFO could actually be piloted by human-like AI or living humans not from this Earth. She explained that the USS Nimitz returned to the same place year after year and entire squadrons have been seen on radar shortly before the encounter. Tessman theorizes that the intelligence piloting the mysterious craft is not only human-like, but actually human. Our own species time-traveling from the future to observe its history. NASA is tracking a massive asteroid. The colossal asteroid is being tracked by NASA's automated systems at the Center for Near-Earth Object Studies in California. The asteroid has officially been dubbed 52768 and it's estimated to measure up to 2.5 miles across. The asteroid will fly by Earth on April 29th. And when this happens, NASA said the asteroid will make a close approach to our planet. According to the Planetary Society, an asteroid bigger than 0.6 miles across is big enough to threaten global destruction. Astronomers estimate such objects have a 1 in 50,000 chance of hitting Earth every 100 years. MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network, released its UFO sighting numbers for February. 540 UFO sightings were reported and 430 of those sightings took place in the United States, followed by 34 in the UK and 33 in Canada. The top three states to report UFO sightings were California, Florida, and Texas. The top reported shape was circle crafts at 104. There were reports of 18 landings, hovering, or takeoffs, as well as 14 entities observed. This is the Rogie Report News on the Fringe FM. I'm Jess Rogie. Broadcasting from a shack on a hill in the Mossy Creek bottoms of Cane Creek, Arkansas. This is Lighting the Void. I am your host, Joe Roop, and we are live on the Fringe FM KTLK Digital Broadcasting 
TheFriends.fm, it is Wednesday night, March the 4th on into the 5th. And tonight we have pop artist, creative director, author, magic practitioner, Alex Kazemi. He's with us tonight. That's coming up shortly. Now, magic is a topic of frequent discussion on this broadcast, but this will be our first discussion on what Alex calls pop magic. And this man also has some very cool experiences with magic that led him into some things in his life that, well, others dream about. And he says it's all due to magic, pop magic. Pretty interesting stuff. I want to thank uh, Truth Seeker for coming on the show last night. All the archives will be caught up very soon. I hope to get them all caught up tonight after the show. And tomorrow night, author, investigator, and lecturer James Keenan will be here. Then Friday, it's the one and only Jeff Harmon. So we got a killer week coming up. I also want to thank our sponsors, AncientLifeOil.com, GetTheTea.com. Now's the time, especially with all this stuff going around, to get yourself cleaned out, prepared, and ready. And... Also, the one and only Metaphorical Archaeology. Give them a call, 214-995-3754. I'm doing my own experiences with Barbara and that, and i got to tell you, it works. The EFT training, or the EFT sessions, they really, really work. Also, Optics Planet, too. Friends.fm forward slash optics. Get you some night vision, telescopes, all that stuff that you want. You can even get scopes for your guns, but uh, I know Dirty Bacon got one. Y'all should check it out. He put the picture in the chat. And by the way, if you want to join the chat room, you can do that too at the fringe.fm forward slash chat room. Also, the call in number for tonight when we open the phones is 1 800 588 0335. That'll be the call in number. You can also call 501 424 5130. Both of those numbers will get you right into the studio. We want you to head over to ufoseekers.com as well, which is backed and supported by the station. Give them a follow on Twitter at ufoseekers and go check out all the new seasons at youtube.com forward slash ufo seekers and if you've had a sighting you can report to them too their number 661 ufo 7889 now alex kazemi is a pop artist creative director and author and his work has been featured on apple music dazed id playboy resident advisor king kong v magazine paper and oyster among others he served as feature editor for the inaugural edition of King Kong Garson, and he lives in Vancouver, British Columbia, and we're going to be discussing his new book, Pop Magic, that's out. I got a copy of it myself, and it's a good book. Alex, man, thanks for coming on the show. It's good to have you. Hey, man, so nice to speak to you. How's it going? It's going. It's going, and I got to tell you, man, your book cuts to the chase, and I, li- I like it. I love books like this because I was talking to you before the show about this, man. Like, I've been studying traditional magic. You know, it's just, it's complex. You got to learn all these things, different tarot, you know, tarot, the Hebrew language, all this stuff is good. But most people want to know, like, how magic works. And your book really gets into that, man. Like, your book talks about that. It just cuts to the chase. But what I wanted you to kind of explain to us right from the jump here is what what pop magic really is, because this is a new term for me. Yeah, well, pop magic is a form of magic that is for everyone and is a practical form of magic. I wrote it as a response to the kind of occult books that people are told to read right when they start to get into magic. And like you said, it's very overwhelming. You know, there's the Kabbalah, the tarot. It can be very off-putting. And I studied, you know, dozens of books about magic and I kind of wanted to create a spiritual uh, book that got right down to the nitty gritty of how to practice magic and how to do it right away. Well, that's good, man. It, you would not believe how many questions I get about that. Like, and I'm sure you do too. Uh, if you talk to your friends or stuff, maybe before you wrote the book, everybody wants to know like, what's the beginner book and biggest questions, right? Where do I start? And what's this stuff about protection? Because people are kind of afraid of magic still to this day, not as much as they used to. But uh, when people ask you those questions, what do you usually tell them? Well, that that's kind of what a relief, the book was kind of a relief writing it because I felt like I I wanted to create that beginner's guide that I wish existed when I started practicing and and people are very much afraid and intimidated and they feel like sometimes they feel like they're opening this Pandora's box of, you know, meddling with the cosmos. But I kind of want people to be open to the opportunity to practice magic because I think it can change your life. And I think, you know, we're given opportunities to uh, given to dogmatic religions like Christianity. And I think we should have access to magic. It should be our birthright. Yeah. It kind of feels like it's the one thing that's left out, you know, and it does make you curious about 
the human potential. And I remember reading in your book, you're like, you know, I'm not really here to, to prove to you that magic works. Magic is a theory, but in your life, man, it's definitely worked. You talk about how you went from just this regular Joe like me, there's some regular dude living in Canada. Next thing you know, you're working with all these pop stars and manifesting yeah. all this stuff. I mean, that's pretty intense, man. That's like a dream life kind of for a lot of people, you know? Yeah. And, and it kind of all started in my mind with, with, the, with the belief that it could happen. And, you know, I think a lot of us get ourselves in lower versions of reality with our limited beliefs because we've been conditioned by society and, and people to believe that we can't accomplish certain things. And magic is a great way to break through those barriers because a lot of magic is around uh, positive consciousness and unlimited divine will. Right. Yeah, very well said, too. And some of the people you worked with was like, which one was the most surprising, though? Was it Marilyn Manson? I mean, out of all the people that you've, like, you know, you've, you're talking about the Instagram picture with Madonna or talking to Marilyn Manson on the phone. That one, to me, would have been like the coolest moment ever. Was that the coolest yeah, one yeah. for you? Yeah, I mean, Manson, it, you know, he's such a magical person, but um, I think he he has kind of darker magic around him. And I think when we first started talking, a lot of weird paranormal experiences started to happen in my life and um, kind of his energies got kind of stuck on, on me. And, and uh, I, I, of course I have so much respect for him and, and everything he's done. And he changed my life a hundred percent when I did that black candle magic spell to manifest him. And that, that was, you know, that's when I really saw the power of magic and I, and I wanted to, to share it. But it's kind of interesting how when you start to experience these things, practicing magic, there's also a sense of isolation because it, it's hard for, to get people to believe you that it's real. Yeah, it is. It's very hard to get people to believe that it's real because it sounds like Harry Potter-ish, man. But you, wouldn't you say <laughs> like, you know, your life kind of proves it. I mean, let's talk about that for a second. Before all this stuff started happening, did you manifest anything? Like, were you studying the secret or looking at any of this stuff? Were you really manifesting anything in your life or was it just kind of like a, a, a huge transition? Well, I was pretty ambitious and, and I, and I had a big will to, 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 to manifest the things that I wanted in life through kind of practical work in the lower worlds by, you know, working hard and being ambitious and hustling and, and that kind of stuff. But when I discovered magic, it, it took everything to the next level. And before I started practicing magic, you know, I was a pretty apathetic, nihilistic, hedonistic type person. So I was, it, it was my first spiritual experience and my first encounter with spirituality. I was very cynical about spirituality and positive thinking and self-help and all of that stuff before, which kind of shocks people to hear. Yeah, it does. It shocks me to hear because the way you write your book, you're not cynical about it at all. It's almost like, it's almost like, yeah, exactly. Like this would have been the book that I would have wanted to grab, you know, before I grabbed that big, thick Golden Dawn book or anything by Crowley. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> this would have actually helped me say, oh, well, here's this guy that is just normal like me and you can define normal however you want. And then he uses this stuff and now it's all changing. You know, like his life is changing for the better. But you also talk about, I mean, it's not like you don't leave out the dangers. You do talk about that. You talk about chaos quite a bit and how sometimes, you know, we should, you could manifest chaos purposefully, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think um, it took me a long time to accept after I started practicing rituals is that a lot of magic is about um, inducing trials in your life, whether it's coming from entities or, 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 or or it's just the nature of how this practice works, but you have to survive a trial usually to get to your will and, and to, to manifest the magic. And maybe that's because the angels and the spirits are, are rooting for us and they want us to do that soul work and to change through magic. But yeah, there's definitely, it's, it's, it's not uh, this new age thing. Magic is, is not for the faint of heart. You know, it requires work, soul work, uh, lower world work. It, it's, it's not easy. It's, it, it's not something simple. So what do you think the big trigger point was for, which a lot of practitioners do, right? They try magic and they're like, oh, it's not working. This is working. And then all of a sudden these things started working. What was it? The big, was it the, oh, I understand this now how the energy and emotion stuff works. And now I get it. 
and then it all kind of started working for you or did it just kind of increase over time? Well, I, I always get results and I think, you know, it's probably because of a combination of things. You know, I am very emotional with my will when, when I do it, but I also think my relationship with the upper worlds, I, I, I have a theory in the book that magic is created through um, entities creating trials for us. And and then we have to survive the trials to get to the magic, as, as I said before. But I think um, I my belief in it started to happen when, when the Manson spell worked, for sure. Like, that's when I right. just knew it. I, I just, there was no way that yeah, reality could bend like that. Yeah, I would have been like, man, are you, is this a prank call? Or, you know, you could kind of tell <laughs> Marilyn Manson's voice. But he'd be like, whoever you are, that's what I'd say. You do a really good impression. You know, it doesn't, doesn't sound right. But you got, I don't, you know what, even in the back of my mind, Alex, even hearing you talk about this, there's something in the back of my mind that's thinking, yeah, that is really cool. But I don't know if I can do it. And I think a lot of people have that voice. Regardless of, you know, uh, you know, learning magic or whatever, I think there's this realm of doubt that's back there that keeps us from thinking we could have those types of things in our life. And maybe uh, magic is how we overcome those things. Maybe that's why it's good. Well, yes. And, you know, I'm I'm not above that. I've had so much doubt that I've had to, to defeat. Um, but through magic gave me the treasure chest and tools to beat that doubt, to kind of look at doubt as this kind of sound in the background. You know, our, our doubt are not facts. They're just opinions. They're just, you know, noise in the background. And if you can bypass that noise, you can go to a higher level of consciousness and a higher level of reality and, and put put that belief in yourself. I mean, you know, so many people would never believe that I accomplished the things that I accomplished, but it really started with with belief in the mind which which is a form of magic i mean positive thinking could be looked at as one of the most practical forms of magic and and it's not new agey or something to be cynical of it's it's alchemy yeah, interesting you say alchemy right alchemy is a mystery to me i've studied alchemy for uh, i don't know how long it seems like there's all these different versions of alchemy but what i do know and what you tagged on like really big time in your book was alchemy is all about us kind of understanding what to do with energy and how it manifests and then how we can work with it. Right. Yes. I think alchemy is regenerating emotions and feelings to your will. So if you're in a bad mood, you can use your divine and free will to change that bad mood. You know, maybe you could assign a color to it and change that color. You know, if you're in a revengeful mood that is, is, is a lower feeling and, and it's not a good, idea you could say this is a red feeling and then you could visualize that red coming back to you in silver and you could assign silver as productivity i mean alchemy is going from lead to gold and we can do this all day long that's so cool man you know and uh i was thinking about the planets it was weird too because i was reading your book and as i was thinking about things it would happen like it was one of those books where you read and you go well oh i wonder what his thought on this is and then bam you kind of get right to it it was really strange and it's impactful. It's one of these, I promise you guys, it's one of these books where it's very informative, but very simple and easy to read too. And I don't know, man, you've, how long have you been creating stuff? I mean, you've been being a, how long have you been a creative director? I'm just curious. Well, I, I've been, I've been create. I mean, I dropped out of high school when I was 15 to work in the publishing industry, like in the magazine industry and fashion industry. So I'm, I'm 25 now. So I've been working for like 10 years, kind of climbing the career ladder and, 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 and trying, you know, to be here right now, writing books and, and accomplishing my dreams. But, you know, I faced a lot of rejection on the way I got a lot of doors slammed in my face, but through magic, I, I just kept believing that I would one day be where I am right now. Yeah, that's so cool. And you discuss a specific, you call it in your book, there's two things called specific outcome magic and then uh, abstract outcome. And this is where I was thinking about the kinds of things that happen in our life, like chaos. When we, if we decide to do a spell or whatever, you have to be kind of ready for what happens. I think that's what scares people away, right? Because they, they'll do magic, especially like when the first time they do it and everybody calls that beginner's luck or whatever. And all of this yeah. crazy stuff happens. And then they're like, Oh man, I don't know if 
I'm going to do that again. It worked too good. And this happened and that happened, but isn't, you know, isn't that, that's what's supposed to happen, right? You're supposed to see how like nature works and everything happens and you kind of put your finger in there and messed with it a little bit. Right. Yeah, exactly. And I'm kind of advocating for a real kind of magic, like a Herculean kind of magic where you show up when the trials come, you don't kind of, forget your occult knowledge and forget your magic when things are going rough. You you see that as a, ch- as a chance to alchemize and get to the higher version of yourself. And um, whether that is through a ritual or a trial that is happening in your life, I, I think it, it's really important for people who are practicing magic to, to, to make that change because that's the change that goes to your soul. And that's that's the fulfillment it, it is 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 growing in the evolution and like we talked about earlier is finding yourself through magic yeah i've definitely understand what you're saying there i found myself through it too and i think in a way you might be a little like me because before the show you're talking about all you know the moons and cancer you talk about emotion like that's why you know like a lot of chaos magicians ask they say why are you into ritual magic and you're booked I mean, I can see why you're into it. Why I'm, I love ritual magic because you can actually, that's the one time where you can take all of that stuff that you probably even some stuff that's not socially acceptable in certain situations and just release it as purely as you want to. Um, and ritual yeah. magic to me is where it's at. So yeah, it's very cathartic, isn't it? Yeah. 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 And it's like, that's what, and that's what people are afraid of. They're afraid of that because it's spooky, right? Imagine this guy, you know, doing these chants or whatever with all the candles lit and he's got these colors and incense stuff going and it doesn't, you know, it creeps people out, but it's not any different in my opinion than someone doing a play or painting a picture. I mean, would you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're exactly right. And I think, and I think there, there's something so powerful about when you give yourself that time on a full moon or a new moon and you're connecting to the power of the planets and nature and earth. And and it can be like a celebration of life when you do a ritual and, um, you know, you could get results out of it. You might really get results out of it. So it's, it's such a positive thing to me. It is a very positive thing. Um, and I'm glad that you say that, man. I really am. Uh, you know, I'm kind of curious, though. You, and when you were on Grand America, you kind of discussed these entities that present themselves. Now, this is something I've never heard before, but you kind of phrased it like entities and drag, so to speak. What did you mean yeah, by yeah. that? Um, well, I have this theory that spirits are entities. And so when I call on an angel from a book or if I'm creating my own entity, it's a spirit taking on that role with the feeling and the vibration and it's feeding on that and I can work with it or communicate with it. And whether it is a a spirit or an immaterial essence, we don't know. But what I do know is when I do contact these spirits, paranormal experiences happen. I get contacted with specific numbers, repeating numbers. Mm. Um, it's it's very bizarre, and I am a full believer in entities and the spirit world, and I think it is tied to using magic. You ever had, like, what what's one of the craziest paranormal things that's happened to you, you would say? Like, give me um, an example. It was, like, the, it was, like, in the middle of the day, and I kind of fell, I didn't fall to the ground, but I went into a state of sleep paralysis, like, while huh. I was kind of awake. And uh, an entity kind of dragged me around the house and was saying my name. And I was in a depressed, dark state. So I think while I was being energetically open, I a nasty little bugger got let in. And, um, Were that you was, alone? Yes, I was alone. Wow, dude, that sounds freaky. That sounds it, freaky, man. It was freaky. And, um, but... I don't, I, I, I guess it was a part of opening. They say that sleep paralysis happens a lot when you open yourself up to the astral plane and the astral world. Yeah, it does. Right. Like we talked about that last night. It definitely does that. There's that state between sleep and man is such a powerful place to be though, too. Right. Like there's a doorway there between sleep and awake. And I've even had things where I, where I could hear voices and stuff as I'm falling asleep, things like that. Do you think, do you think magic is about more about getting to that place 
or more about understanding the subconscious or is it a little bit of a mixture of both? I think it's, I think that that is a part of it. It's a part, that's a part of the consciousness and, and understanding yourself and, you know, under, you know, understanding the dream world and, you know, relating to the world in a magical way. But I think magic should be about manifesting your dream life, but also doing your soul work and doing the change. I, I think the next level after my book would be the tree of life in Kabbalah, which, but I would want people to accomplish their material world goals to realize it's not the answer. And it's really about doing the soul work. Interesting. So you think about, see, and you know, what's funny about that too, is I had a golden Dawn instructor tell me that he said, the first thing that you need to do is so funny, man, because these leaders of like big orders are saying the same things you are. And he said, the first thing that you need to do, it is bizarre, right? Because you, you understand this, but he said, the first thing you need to do is take care of your per- your needs, things like that. Like, what what does a human really need? It needs love. It needs a home. It needs, a, it needs uh, you know, acceptance, creativity, that kind of thing, right? And then, you know, work on your kind of spiritual ascension. But I wonder sometimes, isn't, isn't like trying to get all of those things in your life part of your ascension? Isn't it part of the process? Or does it have to I be agree. in order? I think, I think, I know you're right. It is, it is a part of the process, 100%. And... Um, maybe it's not as nonlinear as levels as as we think, but I think um, through the Sephirots and the Tree of Life, um, there is a lot of uh, positive information on how to um, recognize your negative a- attributes and how to transform them into positive. And I feel like that literally that transformation goes straight into your soul, and it's very fulfilling. Yeah, I totally agree. Very well said. Well, guys, we got to take our first break. Alex Kazemi, alexkazemi.com also is the website. You can go check out the book Pop Magic, too. I'm going to drop all the links in the chat room, and all of the links will also be in the archives, too. We'll be right back with Alex Kazemi. Stay with us. Charlton from Metaphorical Archaeology. If you've ever had a traumatic paranormal experience, the effects of it may stay with you for years. Uh, Who do you talk to? You can't go to conventional help. What we do is we use emotional freedom techniques or tapping to actually neutralize the effects of that event. Maybe when you tell the story now, your heart races and your palms get sweaty. You don't even want to think about it because you don't know how to neutralize that. That's what EFT tapping does. It neutralizes those emotions the circuit that that was recorded on is gone the energy flows freely and you're free of it and that's what emotional freedom is all about we offer this as a pro bono service but this is something that i offer because no one it seems is helping people with these experiences if you'd like to reach me it's really easy my cell phone is 214-995-3754 please leave a message i will get back to you as quickly as possible or you can email me barb.eft at gmail.com and EFT stands for emotional freedom techniques reach out to me it's confidential this works you won't believe the results hey this check is wrong I worked a holiday and seven hours of overtime not getting paid correctly is a real pain it could also hurt our boss if our company provides out of compliance checks That's right, construction companies doing business with the government can get fined, or officials of the companies can go to jail if the checks aren't right. It's a law. The Davis-Bacon Act has 30 compliance issues for every check, but there is an easy way for construction companies to be in compliance. EMARS offers Compliant Client, a web-based system that finds and corrects all 30 of the possible out-of-compliance check issues. Users of Compliant Client report an 80% savings in time and money. Running a weekly payroll usually takes about five minutes. All 15,000 plus clients of EMARS have never had a legal compliance issue. Plus, they sleep better on check day. Contact EMARS at emarsinc.com or call 480-595-0466. All right, man, this is Crow 777 and you are listening to The Fringe FM. Bro, 
like me old chinas. I know it's an ad break, but before you lot shoot off and make yourself a cup of Rosie Lee or whatever else it is you're going to sling down your Gregory Peck, you need to listen to me bubble. If, like me, you found your way to light in the void via a downloadable podcast, you might want to take a butcher's at the Fringe FM Wind and Kite. You won't, Adam and Eve, how many other shows there are or what they rabbit on about. Ancient history, conspiracy, the consciousness, the esoteric, the occult, metaphysics, parapolitical, ufology, technology and spirituality to name but a few. they got featured hosts like Ryan Gable, Jeremy Scott, Alex Exum, Tim Doyle, Cortana and Gigi, Susanna Ross, the Reverend John Polk, Michael Deacon and J.D. Lewis. You might find yourself listening to the thoughts and theories of the author of The Fish you just finished reading. Or you could pick up the dog and bone, call in and tell everyone your own beliefs or experiences. So do me a favour. Before you put on the ansel or crack open a bottle of vino or roll a joint, Go to the Fringe FM and see what you're missing. From a cave in the depths of your mind, it's Light in the Void with Joe Root. The Fringe FM isn't just a radio station. We also provide services for all your audio production needs. If you are interested in live radio or pre-recorded podcasts, we're here to help. We even do audio enhancements and voiceovers if needed. If you want to do a podcast or live radio show and even want the option to syndicate on terrestrial radio from simple audio file enhancement to live production and call screening, we have you covered. We have worked with some of the best professionals in the business in order to provide coaching instruction for content creation, show structure, and more. Contact The Fringe Digital Media for more at info at thefringe.fm. That's info at thefringe.fm. Or call 501-777-563. Rewind for a consultation. Hey, I'm JM DeBoard, and when I want to talk about dreams, I look up my man Joe Root and his show, Lighting the Void. Kazemi, our guest tonight, we're talking about his new book, Pop Magic. And, uh, man, this is the time to be talking about magic. I don't know. What do you think, Alex? Do you think we're on the increase, definitely, with magical practitioners nowadays? And I think releasing your book is its perfect timing, actually, man, you know, uh, releasing yeah. this book. Yeah, I mean, I wanted to release it at the start of this decade to kind of capture our current magic climate. And also give people the tools to survive what some people feel is like the collapse of Western civilization. It does kind of feel like that, don't it? You know, that we get like the old end time vibes kind of thing is going on. And then everybody's there's more magical practitioners now than there ever used to be. But you know what I worry about? I'm curious what you think about this, too. And before we get back into your story here is do you think that let's pretend just for a moment that everybody on the earth practiced uh ritual magic would it make it more effective or less effective i mean doesn't the rebellious nature of magic and the mystery of it and the dark nostalgia give it its power in a kind of a way well i think why it's powerful is because when when we discover it it we're we're kind of creating a reconciliation with something that we have been not allowed to access and we might see ourselves in magic. So you're correct. The discovery of magic and the the feeling that it's hidden and you're finding something new does give it power. But I do feel like any person who has magical instincts deserves to know about this spiritual system and to have an opportunity to change their life with it. But you need to be, would you say you have the opportunity to change your life, but you better be ready for a, some intensity and chaos, maybe a little bit? Um, yeah, for sure. But I, you know, maybe it's not always that way. Maybe it's for the, for the bigger dreams that stuff comes. But I, I do think that, um, 
yeah, I, I think it, it's it's a part of your birth path to, to practice magic. It, you know, it, it should be your innate birthright to to find to find magic and, and you should enjoy the, that self transformation from those trials because life is not going to be easy regardless. So if there is chaos from magic, you know, you're, you're going to grow and change and maybe you're you'll evolve at a faster pace. Right. Exactly. I believe that too. It's there's something about it that goes to our birthright, but you know, after you're telling me like you had a paranormal experience and an entity kind of drags you around the room a lot of times. And for most people would agree that that would be it for them. They'd be like, okay, I'm not touching this anymore. That was too freaky. And and then they kind of, some people even go on a campaign about how evil it is, but not you, you kept going. Why is that? No, no, I would I would challenge those people and be like, well, what what are you what are you afraid of? Like, what are we afraid of that entity doing? I mean, I know girls who've, you know, discovered the satanic Bible and sold their soul to Satan and woke up with flies everywhere and, um, you know, did an invocation to a demon and, and, and had a drug addiction a few weeks later because the demon had a fetish and and all that kind of stuff. I mean, that stuff comes though from a, a, a negative lower vibrational intention you know you you can create chaos through magic and dark magic if you want to but it doesn't have to be that you can also create a beautiful life with magic yeah you can i totally man yeah you're saying so much that resonates it's like i keep saying i agree i feel like i'm saying it too much yeah i'm glad i'm getting to talk to you man so what about astral travel do you intentionally do that? Because this is something I learned. Like I got into astral travel before I did magic. And then I kind of realized, well, wait, there's this whole, it's not really about astral travel. Like there, there's this whole different realm of, of consciousness. And then there's this, uh, linear kind of way of things manifest. And that's when I got into the Kabbalah and realized there's this whole other realm and it's internal maybe, or it's external. I don't know. And yeah, it yeah. fascinated me. And I'm wondering if, and do you yourself, do you, do you practice any of that where you're just directly trying to have, you know, out of body experiences or, or do you just look at it more of like dream world and manifestation type thing? Well, it's happened before and, it, and it's happened when I least expected it to happen, like doing a mindfulness body scan or when I kind of never intended to, to happen. It usually doesn't happen when I intend it to happen, but it has happened and I, I'm like flew around my neighborhood and I just looked down at everything and it was, I still have such visceral memories of doing it and going back into my body and looking at my body and my soul going back into my body. It was very, very strange. And just looking around the room and, and I totally believe that we have souls and astral projection, and astral travel is possible. I think maybe people with more water placements in their charts like Pisces and Cancer and Scorpio might be able to do it more than others. But, um, I, I, when it's happened, it's happened when I didn't expect it to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I've had one really intense experience and the one you're talking about sounds like that where, you know, like you're real local and you know, you're there. It's so amazing though. And that's all I wanted to do was just keep doing that. But it seems like and this has happened to me magically, and I'm curious what you think about this too. You know how, let's say you do something for the first time, like you learn a new way to do magic, and you do yeah. it, and you're super successful. But a lot of magicians yeah. say, well, that's the beginner thing. It always happens. And then you keep going, and then it's not as successful or something. It's like something starts getting in the way. Has that ever happened to you? Um. That hasn't ever happened to me, but I I can understand why it would happen. I think maybe too much of attachment of wanting that first time result to keep happening and maybe overthinking. I think a lot of people overthink and try to be perfectionists when it comes to magic. And I actually heard a lot of people have a lot of a hard time actually clearing their head to even focus on, on a visualization and that kind of made me think of the social media era and how so many distractions are hijacking um, our magical will and consciousness and focus. Yeah, for sure. You talk about, you talk about magical will too. That is, that's something that I can't explain to people. It seems like, it seems like writers and other folks have a really, really easy way of explaining the will, 
But when I try to explain it, it's like I get all tongue tied. Like, what's the difference between will and just something you want? And I'm like, I, I don't know. Do you? How would you explain the will or the magical will? Well, I'll explain will in like a very pop magic way. It's just your way of making a choice and your free will to make a choice. If you want to go to Burger King or if you want to go to McDonald's, that's will. It's a choice. You know, going to 7-Eleven and buying a Pepsi is, you know, would by traditional magical uh, occult ways be be doing a ritual because you set an intention, you went and did it and you got your end result. So it's just really about connecting to your ability to to choose where you shift your focus and, and your choices. Do you think that uh, Crowley was uh, a good magician? Is that some of the first books you started writing? Because every time we talk about Crowley, there's always that moral dilemma. People want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like, maybe I don't want to hang out with the guy, but I learned some brilliant stuff from him. Uh, did you yeah, no, I start think, out reading I those books? People- yeah, I, I think people like him, and but I see a problem in the occult community with a lot of false worship towards him. And I actually see in my book, um, you are equal to icons, whether they're occult or celebrities. You have that same power and will that they do within you. You just have to choose to access it. You know, why worship Anton LaVey when you could be as powerful as him? Yeah, that is that is kind of funny, right? Like, why do we automatically put ourselves in a lower category? Yeah, it's a, that's probably why you quickly, you know, came to to do things or communicate or or just have things in your life having to do with pop idols and stuff. Because most people think, you know, that's never going to happen to me. I mean, there's people that man have lived in California their whole life, even in Hollywood, that haven't got to do what you've done in this amount of time. How well, how much time are we talking about here between all this stuff, by the way, that's happened? Oh, I mean, the the magical stuff like Madonna, Manson, Taylor, that was from when I started practicing magic in 2015 to now. So five years. That's a short amount of time, man. That's a short amount of time. Yeah. But I mean, it's it a lot of time, but it's a short yeah. amount of time. Yeah. You know, it was just about focus. Focus. So. When you, t- when, you dis- when you talk about focus, if I was to focus on something without emotion or visualization, would I get maybe a little results kind of thing? Or do I absolutely need emotion, focus, and visualization, all of it together, for it to really trigger? Because some people, like you said, aren't emotional people. So they may have a hard time getting to those emotional states and then get frustrated with their practice. You understand what I'm saying? Like, what would you yeah, say? Yeah, no, I think air signs struggle with that sometimes. I think that I think, you know, for me, I do think, though, I think visualization is a big part of why magic works. You know, whether some I've I've even considered the idea that it's mesmerization or hypnosis, you know, that the fact that when you do a ritual, you are possibly just programming the subconscious mind to do the practical work to get to your goal and you believe in it so hard that you ended up end up getting it but there's too much paranormal astral magic in a magical environment to kind of you know say that it's just psychology i think it is something more but i do think visualization and emotion is actually essential to practicing powerful magic you know that's what a lot of skeptics will say when they talk about magic and And people say, well, man, it just works. There's no doubt that it works. And that's what they say. They say, well, it's not that it, there's something magical happening. Like you said, it's like you say that some people say it's more like you've changed your focus and now you notice things that you didn't notice before, or you go after things that you didn't go after before, but they never take into account, just like you're saying, paranormal activity, astral travel, strange dreams, uh, Manifesting, yeah, conspiracies, manifesting things that that are just immaculate. Like, oh yeah, well, I talked to Marilyn Manson on the phone. Now what? Yeah. You know, like yeah, I specifically yeah. went after that. You know, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just talking to you during the break about you know, there's a lot of authors out there that write books and do stuff, and just so everybody can kind of see what Alex is talking about, and and they they try to get on radio shows. In fact, you know what? They they pay publicists a lot of money and 
never get on the big shows. But I mean, like tomorrow night, you're going to be on one of the biggest shows. You're on, you're going to be on coast to coast. It's like you accelerated it. And I know you yeah. used magic to do that. You had to have. Yeah. Yeah. And I used magic. And I think the thing that is great as a response to, to what you're saying is, is that I maybe other people aren't using magic to get on coast to coast. And maybe I was the one who did. And that's why I got on. I mean, I think that, I think that a lot of my specific, I mean, every human beings have, have specific dreams and specific intentions. And if they don't materialize that with their will and do the magic, you know, you're, you're letting it fall, fall back. And you're also letting, let, you're not evolving and, and seeing your dream life happen when you could, you know, and, and you don't want someone else to take your own dream. Yeah, that's man. That's so true. I'm, I'm afraid. Uh, I think, man, I really want to talk about this with you too. Cause you said this to me, you said maybe cause I was telling you about my doubts and why I don't do certain things. Like I do a lot of more of abstract magic than I do really specific things. And you were like, well, maybe you're afraid of your own success. And I thought about that and I was like, maybe, you know, I've, I've heard that before and it doesn't make sense why a human would be afraid of their own happiness and success. But then again, when you say it, I can feel it. So I'm trying to understand like that why the human is afraid of their own power and their own success. Isn't that weird that we are sometimes? Yeah. And I think, you know, shadow work is a big buzz word in the occult community right now. And what it really is practically is to go through that subconscious slime and, you know, find those negative thought patterns, negative beliefs, negative experiences, and kind of release them and purify them and, and convert them to positive thoughts. So, you know, maybe you have to recondition yourself to believe in yourself in that way, because there's something deep down, maybe from childhood or just life experience, yeah. or, just, or maybe an internal experience you created that has this like limited belief that you just need to release. And the waning moon is a great time to do shadow work. The dark of the moon, the two weeks. Let's talk about that for a minute. You, you, you put really big importance on the moon and there's, I love the moon. I'm in love with the moon. It's one of the reasons why I do so much of the stuff I do in my life. And there is something definitely magical about it, but you jump straight into it. Like I said before, that's why I love your book. You jump straight to it. And immediately you talk about, we put in pop magic, we put importance on the moon. You don't really talk about any of the other planets, the sun or anything, but you focus on no. the moon at the beginning. Now I haven't finished the book, so I don't know if you talk about the other planets, but do you just specifically work with the moon more than anything that you do? I pay attention to the other astrological transits sometimes, but I, for a beginner, I think you need to know that the moon is, is the most powerful aid to your magic and if you go into the other planets right away i think i would have freaked some people out yeah probably. and and i think um the moon is incredibly powerful the moon phases are incredibly powerful and as a cancer myself i think i've seen my moods and uh being controlled by the moon phases and i've seen events of of my life synchronized with the moon phases and the, if you study the astrological transits and how they make you feel there is no way that there are coincidences that that <laughs> stuff is coming up and it corresponds exactly with that archetype it's it's just too bizarre you know i was you're man i gotta talk about this because you're so right like i was working with barbara who does she's a sponsor here does one of the metaphorical archaeology and helps you release stuff like trauma things like that <clears throat> and I, I had a session with her and then you know i got into uh you know i got on solar fire looked up my transits and that exact same day it was like jupiter's trying chiron right and it says mm -hmm. you know you're going to release some old pain today and meet a healer some deep-seated pain i'm like come on wow. man. I'm like you know that wow. it, it, those transits hit almost like every single time it's really weird right it's kind of freaky but it is magical in a sense. Yeah. And, and it, and, and, you know, even if you're a skeptic of astrology, you can look at it from a Carl Jungian point of view, you know, just having these words to organize these traits about ourselves is so powerful. You know, if you can recognize 
your negative cancer traits if you have a cancer placement and then change them into a positive, more evolved version of the cancer archetype. What's wrong with that? I, I think I think there's so much ability to help yourself through astrology. Do you uh, do you practice like do you do readings and stuff for people? Does anybody ever approach you about that? Um, no, but I, I don't do tarot and I don't do psychic readings, but I definitely have gotten in trouble when I've ignored my intuition and I've gotten messages to follow my intuition and have reaped consequences from my guides because I didn't listen. Me too, but, man. um, I, I think it's incredibly important for people who, if they decide to open themselves up to their spirit guides and, and the, ma the magic world and doing magic is you know, they're going to expect you to listen to their advice and they're there for a reason. And if you don't, they're going to be pissed and they'll tell you they're pissed. <laughs> You're like talking synchronicity to me right now. So bad. Are you a water sign? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, I'm a cancer. Yeah, you're cancer. Okay. And what's your moon sign? Just curious. Moon. Sag moon. Wow. Yeah. So you're all like, so when the moon actually does go through uh, phases, you definitely feel it for sure. Uh, oh, I mirror it. I mirror it. I feel it so heavy. And uh, there's no coincidence that when the dark of the moon hits, I'm, I, 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 I go into my, my shadow self and my darker self. And when the new moon hits, I'm full of energy and I'm, it's a rebirth. I, I, I even talk about in the book about shape shifting, um, every new moon and full moon and, 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 and mirroring those cycles and, and recreating, um, new blessings and, and, and doing that shadow work and leaving behind those negative beliefs in that waning cycle that will never happen again. And just moving on and just remembering that you left it there in the waning cycle. Yeah. It's, I've, I've started to notice too, because I'm, I get like, I'm a cancer moon. So my, intu I doubt, I doubt my intuition sometimes, um, because it's in there, but at, you're right. Every time I've doubted it, it's turned around and been like, yep, you should have listened. I, I used to get so mad about it, Alex. Cause I'd be like, man, what if, why, why wish somebody would prove me wrong? Cause I, even the bad things, I can feel them coming. And then I'm thinking, yeah. just somebody prove me wrong. Like, don't do this to me. And then they are, it always turns out right and it becomes frustrating, but you're right. I mean, if you have that inside you, you should use it to your advantage, you know, like understand. Yeah, and it's a, that's a powerful placement cancer moon. A lot of, uh, musicians have it. Kurt Cobain, Courtney Love, Halsey, Taylor Swift, Drake, a lot of, uh, a lot of musicians have cancer moon. And I think it's, uh, it's a very empathetic moon. You can mirror people's feelings and, and it, you can, you can feel so much. And I think, that's why I say in the book that the ca cancer is the archetype of, of alchemy because, because of the way you can feel everything and convert it. Wow. I really appreciate you saying that, man. That makes me feel good because for so long, you know, as a guy, I got to tell you, especially as a Southern guy that that's been grown, a lot of men have been grown that way. Like you got to, you know, you better bottle those emotions up. It's weak. Don't show anybody your emotions. Yeah, Don't be yeah. emotional. It's weak. Right. But it's not weak. It's powerful, actually. No, 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 no. It's com it's completely powerful. And I think that's that's one of society's ways of of taking away your magic. I mean, society w w doesn't want people to practice magic, you know, and I think if you practice magic, you can deprogram and, and be a part of that reversal process from all the sigils and all the magic that's being used on you all the time, because because when you're open to magic, you can feel the energies that are getting stuck on you through the things that you consume. You have to be very careful about what you consume. Now, when you say consume, are you talking about just like what you eat or what you see or what you take in through your senses altogether? Is that what you mean? No, I mean, I mean, well, I mean like what, what energy you consume, you know, what you choose to watch, what you choose to read, mm -hmm. the, the vibration of that goes into your consciousness and goes into your mind and it gets stuck on you. And, you know, that's also free will. You have a choice to, to, you know, not click on that meme or not click on, on something that is a part of group think you, you, you can think for yourself and I'm advocating for people to deprogram from society and to think for themselves. That's a good thing to advocate, especially right now with all the, the fear about the coronavirus and the political stuff going on and everything like that. 
you know, do you feel like that we're manifesting this more? The fear of it just makes it work. I feel that way. I feel like when oh, we yeah, fear something, it manifests way more. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, no, of course, if you feed fear, you'll, you'll get fear and you'll get, you'll get negative, uh, chaos. But I think, um, the coronavirus is a great example to show you the power of the media and how fear gets implanted into people's subconscious minds and people get hypnotized by this spell and they go into a panic and, you know, we don't know if it's propaganda or not or, or how it all happened, but you see how it gets affected like a media virus in the real world. People start to change. They they stop shaking hands with people. They they freak out and they go into this Armageddon Y two K type scare. And all it started was through the news. You know that's that's powerful. That's magic right there. Indeed, very well said. And I want everybody to know too, like you know, uh, before we get at the top of the hour here too, worth our guest Alex Kazemi, but. You know, uh, the flu has gotten people pretty sick too, but they don't, they can't propagandize that as much either. It's killed people too, but they don't have the propaganda on it. So we really shouldn't be feeding into the fear. AlexGazemi.com also open up the phone lines when we come back. You can ask questions in the chat room too. Go check out our shop, lightingthevoid.com forward slash shop, grab a t shirt, donate, help us out. We'll be right back. The Fringe FM. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now, the Paranormal Radio app free in google play and the ios app store hey this is no way jose a northern california piscean stuck in the arizona desert i'm a void walker and i got the shoes to prove it so what do i do when my soul yearns to delve deep into the realm of the unknown i aim my satellite straight into the night sky and catch a smooth ride on the ktlk db radio waves i tune into lighting the void with joe root on the french fm Joe, Lighting the Void is the best show on the planet. This is Barney, your friend from Facebook. Thank you and all the crew for all you do. Namaste, my friend. This is Macon from the Foothills, North Carolina, and I am a void walker. G'day, void walkers. This is Lily from Down Under Australia. The world may be small, but Nigma is great. So let your curiosity take you for a journey with Joe Root. Hey, this is V, coming in from Central Maryland. And I am a void walker. This is Kevin Darkerty, a beginner void walker. I'm from Vancouver, BC. I know a little about a lot, and uh, as Lennox King said, I guess the rest. I learned a lot from uh, Mr. Root and the show. And I uh, heard it from the beginning. I knew right then he was going to be a new art bell. Thanks for all your uh, shows and keep it up. Hey, this is Derek from Mass, aka the Night Stalker, and I'm a void walker. This is Mark from Chicago, and I walk the void to ascertain what is consciousness. My name is Jared Johnson, and I'm from Humboldt County, California. I do not know all the answers to the questions about reality. I do not claim to know the ultimate truth about life. I seek that which has been made hidden as a part of a family of explorers of consciousness. I'm a void walker. Thanks, Jaru. I'm Clyde Lewis. You are listening to The Fringe FM. Hey, is that a new music app? Yeah, check it out. Surfer Music Discovery. It links to thousands of online stations, but the twist is you see the song names and artists that are now playing live. That's different. No guessing. Looks like a waterfall of music. So many formats. Rock, oldies, country, R&B, jazz, and a whole lot more. How's that spelled? Surfer. S-U-R-F-R. Is it expensive? It's free. No need to sign up or sign in. Get the Surfer Music app free from Google Play or the App Store. 
Have you ever seen an ad or banner which brought you a feeling that someone is reading your mind or even listening to your conversations? Your online data is being used against you. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable. You can use it on as many devices as you'd like simultaneously. Surfshark encrypts all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensures that your IP address remains hidden. The VPN service that we use at UFO Seekers plus one month free for $1.99 a month. Visit surfshark.deals slash seekers. We all have that story to tell in our lives. The winds were howling. The ground shook. You could hear rushing water. And then history repeats itself. When there's no power, refrigeration fails. Doors with their shelves strip bare. ATMs can't operate. Deliveries stop. Then what? These events can last days or weeks. You need to plan. In statements made during recent interviews, FEMA Administrator Brock Long has repeatedly urged all Americans to understand three truths. FEMA is broke. The system is broken. If this is the new normal, Americans can't rely on federal cavalry when disaster strikes. Don't get caught out in the elements empty-handed. Prepare with us by going to preparewiththefriends.com and get your two-week food supply, 92 servings, eight food varieties with 25-year shelf life, normally $137, now only $75. Or get a month's supply, normally $247, now only $147 shipped in one business day. Just go to preparewiththefriends.com or call 888-440-7931. That's 888-440-7931. Get this great offer and be prepared while it lasts. Hey, French listeners. This is Dave Cruz, host of Beyond the Strange Radio, asking you to join us live Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on The Fringe FM. Visit beyondthestrange.com for links to chat, social media, and schedules of the show. And remember, always stay strange. Pasta. Para-abnormal news, I'm Brad Bernards. The World Health Organization warned last Friday that the window of opportunity to stem the new coronavirus outbreak was shrinking amid concerns over a surge in cases with no clear link to China, according to ScienceAlert.com, the Director General of the World Health Organization. The sudden increase of cases in Italy, the Islamic Republic of Iran, and the Republic of Korea are deeply concerning. There is a lot of speculation about whether this increase means that this epidemic has now become a pandemic. Does this virus have pandemic potential? Absolutely it has. Are we there yet? From our assessment, not yet. Tedros Adinam Ghebreyesus has for weeks insisted the low number of cases of COVID-19 outside the epicenter of the deadly outbreak presented a window of opportunity to contain the international spread. Dr. Anne Shuket, CDC Principal Deputy Director, says we need to be prepared. It's not so much a question of if this will happen anymore, but rather more a question of exactly when this will happen and how many people in this country will become infected. With the rapid rise in drug resistance and many pathogens, new antibiotics are desperately needed. It may be only a matter of time before a wound or scratch becomes life-threatening. Yet few new antibiotics have entered the market of late, and the recent revolution in artificial intelligence offers new hope. Dr. Parthanandi explains that deep learning is the answer. They're able to train a deep learning algorithm to look at molecular structures of over a hundred million chemical compounds. So it's amazing. And to have it identify potential antibiotic molecules that could kill bacteria. And that's how they found this new molecule that they're calling Halicin. That's courtesy WXYZ TV in Detroit. They mimic how neurons in our brains operate by learning patterns in data. The same technology is being adapted to recognize potential antibiotics from millions of chemicals. Connect with the news at paraabnormalradio.com. I'm Brad Bernards, Paraabnormal News. Somewhere between abnormal and paranormal, there's a show called Into the Paranormal. I'm Jeremy Scott. Hear me live Saturdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern on The Fringe FM. It's a call, Joe. 
pick up the phone, dial 1-800-588-0335, toll free from the United States or Canada. You're listening to Lighting the Void Radio. Welcome back to Lighting the Void. Thank you so much for joining us tonight live on the Fringe FM. We're here for you five nights a week, Monday through Friday. All of our archives are free on every podcast player as well as YouTube. And you can check out the website at lightingthevoid.com. Tonight our guest is Alex Kazemi, and he wrote his new book, Pop Magic, which is a, this is a new form of magic. Is this something you've developed, or is this a phrase other people have used before, Alex? Yeah, I, I think... I think pop magic describes our current occult climate as well. I think, you know, we live in a world where people are selling rituals on Patreon. You know, we have celebrities like Lana Del Rey and Azalea Banks talking about magic on Twitter. Netflix is Sabrina, magic.me, mm-hmm. you know, kids on Reddit doing magic and kind of mirroring the late 90s bullet bulletin boards and you know there's this concoction of pop magic everywhere and i felt like you know even for the skeptic reading this book at least you'll understand what people who are witches or magical practitioners are doing if this is how you can at least empathize or or be a voyeur to what people who practice magic are doing this is it yeah, I totally agree, man. I think that uh, it doesn't it feel like there's something next too. almost like, OK, we're now we're now discovering uh, what we can do. We're now discovering who we are, like our potential. Like, we're, I think we're just now I think we're just now getting to the start of it. You know, a lot of people say that uh, like science, quantum physics and all this other stuff is <clears throat> super advanced and all of the um all of the people before were primitive people, but these to me are assumptions. I feel like that we're just now starting to learn our potential and that science is eventually going to have to put consciousness into this realm of mainstream science and even magic in the future. And we're going to become something bigger and better. We're going to learn about, at least in a utopian way, I hope that works, but it may not. It may just be a destruction. Depends on us, doesn't it? Yeah, I I agree with you. I would love to see the evolution of magic and consciousness. And I think even the internet has also so much information and practical tools to how to heal our trauma. You know, there's so much information online about DBT and CBT and all this kind of stuff, which could be looked at as a form of magic. And, you know, the kind of magic that I'm advocating for is, you know, do the practical magic in the lower worlds of, you know, put in the work, uh, be practical, break down your, your dreams into mathematical steps, but also combine that with the upper world magic, which is doing your spells on your full, on the full moons and, and creating this, these different variables and, and these experiments to manifest your, your dream life. And I hope that the new generation of, of magical practitioners, um, are, are coming up with new ideas and discoveries. I advocate that for the end of my, at the end of my book, I say, you need, we need your theories. We need your experiences. We need to learn more about this practice through the decades. Yeah. Oh man. I, yeah, I, I agree. Once again, totally agree with that. Now do you, what are, what are your thoughts on, I mean, I know your thoughts, but I want to discuss this, right? Let's be honest. Your thoughts on banishing first. That's a popular thing, right? You can get on YouTube and like, here's the first ritual that you need to do. The lesser banishing ritual, the pentagram. So everyone's taught how to banish energy and like clear out space and stuff. But you like in your book, you kind of like, hey, banishings and bindings, not so good in my experience. Let's work on more of what you call like purification, right? Yeah, I think banishing and bindings are stupid and overrated. And I think that they're actually, I don't, I don't, I don't understand what was going through these magical practitioners heads when they they've advocated for it, because you're literally creating negative emotion, and energy and vibration and focusing on it, which is just so destructive as consciousness on the astral plane. And it's just not a good decision. You know, purification would be focusing on the light, the white light, visualizing white light and, um, you know, using sage and and kind of maybe more new agey stuff. But the purification and the banishing, I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, recommend that. I think, you know, if you are going within yourself to to banish things and, and bring out those 
darker parts of yourself and writing them down and releasing them, you would need to convert them to to a positive version after that. But that's the purpose of it should be to get that get that equation out. Yeah, it gets it gets confusing, honestly, Alex, because you read about magic and you say, OK, you and it's kind of dangerous in a way because they, they, they teach people one thing. And then later, and I'm sure you've experienced this, you read, wait, this other guy's saying that you invoke in the morning and banish at night. Well, yeah, yeah. Like, well, which one am I supposed to do now? I mean, and even in the tarot, you learn about the history of it and how they change things. And so, but the one thing that we both agree on that hasn't changed is the the, the tree of life, which the, some people I've talked on here, they say it's, it's an old kind of outdated system. But I find the tree of life one of the most powerful things that's ever been in my life. Is that how it's been for you? Yeah, I'm I'm wearing it on my neck right now. And I think uh, as a necklace and um, for me, it's very interesting because when I first started out practicing magic and I was just very beginners, I remember thinking of Kabbalah as this abstract like next level i'll never be able to understand it it's just so confusing i would look at the tree of life i would read donald michael craig and i'd be like what the hell i'm never Mm. gonna i'm never gonna i'm never gonna actualize this but then life got to a point where i could start to understand the kabbalah and i could understand the tree of life and the sephirots and and having that language to identify um, certain qualities about myself and certain qualities in general and to make those corrections it's it's so it's so extremely powerful and even i would i would think it's a huge part of alchemy i think maybe it's possible that the sephirots are these keys to our soul and if we master each um correction we can ascend yeah it is it is pretty powerful and it's like that tree has so many it has so many stories that you could pick up the Bible, you could pick up uh, even the Torah, and you, if you understand it when you study it, and it's a lifelong study, you see that like that's the software behind all of the spiritual stuff is this tree, you know, it's it's there. So we need to just like cut to the chase. Now, it would be really cool to have you to have you write a book on that, like how you use it and stuff. I would read that. Should think about that, man. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that, that, that's a, yeah. No, I, I definitely thought of one day you know, with my experiences with Kabbalah, you know, creating like an advanced, uh, a practical understanding of the tree of life. I would, I would love to do that. But I, I think, um, I think the, the tree of life, like you said something really beautiful right now that, that it's the software to magic. And I think that's also what pop magic is. Like the, the I cut to the core about those of, of how to practice it in the, in the way that it's the most alchemical, simple, and the basic software that is powering all of the different operating systems, all the different computers of religions and spiritual systems, it all comes back to these cut to the core, cut to the bone devices of magic and alchemy. And what I would advocate for people who read the book is, you know, invent your own spiritual system, invent your own gods, invent your own angels, invent your own values and um, and and stop following any dogma like like you talked about you know do it at 3 p.m and you know that that could just be subjective that might just be the practitioner's experience you have to create and your own rules about magic and i think that's why some people are like in the occult community are like you you can't say that because those are all my rules like you know but (laughs) no i should i i should say it because i think it's it's important to be said yeah yeah it's important to challenge stuff i mean isn't that how all these guys, isn't that how, how all of these magical guys came up with what they came up with anyways? Like we should be evolving and developing new ways of doing things. And then like Mitch Horowitz talks about, and Mitch Horowitz is somebody I really respect too. And he actually recommended your book or I know he put in a, like a line about it and he talks about, you, you know, we should evolve into, into these different ways and then even learn ways to simplify it because he likes to simplify things. But I think, you know, he talks about how he doesn't do ritual magic, but I think you understand why I do it. Like I, I love the whole play thing and the emotion and the drama and everything that's involved. And it just seems like you're kind of stacking things to make it more powerful. Right. And it just very intimate. It's very intimate between you and the upper worlds. And I find that some days my, my relationship with the upper worlds is 
uh, something more important to me than the relationship with the lower worlds. I think the only way you can survive this Malkuth plane is by literally working in the upper worlds all the time and, and, and working with your angels. And um, I understand why Mitch might not do do ritual magic, but I, I think ritual magic should should be something the people who are called to it should do. I mean, that's also a big debate, right, is some people do not have this innate desire for spirituality and it confuses us who are so spiritual and 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 it, and it makes you kind of confused is is magic only supposed to be for certain people's paths yeah exactly and yeah exactly i wonder about that there's a lot of different i mean there's a lot of different systems i think for spirituality but manifestation i'm not so sure i mean could we say that we could just use visualization and emotion and and manifest something in our life. I mean, is it that simple? Well, I mean, that's what the secret wrote about, but I've tried that. It's not that simple. Um, at least not for no, me. It's not that simple. And I think that's very disturbing to me that certain people believe that you can just d do your little spell and, and believe that everything's going to just happen. No, there has to be a real world application in the lower worlds you have to um figure out a w you have to figure out the mathematics to your goals that's why it's really great to combine personal development goal setting tony robbins darren hardy style with the upper world magic and and the kabbalah and all that kind of stuff and and my book or things like that because then there's this combination of okay I'm doing the hard work. I'm putting in the hustle in the lower worlds, but I'm also putting in my hustle in the magic worlds. I'm not missing my full moons. I have a level of self self discipline when I do my magic. So you have to create a combination of the two because you don't want to be that delusional person who's reading Crowley books and ev evoking demons and, and not doing the lower world work to, to actually create their dreams. Okay. And, and what are your thoughts on, what are your thoughts on doing lower world work, by the way, like invoking demons and working with demons? You know, like I've had Lon Milo Duquette on here who I love the guy. He's a sweet guy. He's so cool. Uh, but he talks about, you know, that these demons are just kind of like parts of yourself that you don't really realize. But then I've had other people come on and go, no, 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 no. They're separate things. You know, I've heard this before. And they get there's a lot I've of debates the in the thing. magical debate in the community. And, and it kind of confuses the beginner, you know. I've heard the same thing. Like I think, um, and also when I refer to lower wor worlds, I just mean Malkuth, like in in our Earth plane, and oh, the gotcha. fact that that we need to um, elevate our our consciousness, and that we need that the the material world will not fulfill our soul, and 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 we need to kind of like a Gnostic point of view, we need to go to we need to work with the upper world. So I mean, like in reality, um, or or your personal. The, your idea of reality or, or the material world or, you know, whatever the day to day grind is, you have to you have to do the work there, but also in the magical planes in the upper world. So that combination can be extremely powerful. I think demons can be facets of yourself and you can create them as facets of yourself. But I also I, I why why would we why would there not be in material essence in the astral worlds? You know, right. why wouldn't there be? real i mean how would how would we even get these weird images or ideas of what they look like if people have never encountered them you know it's just it's it's very strange but you know i i also believe in weird conspiracies that there's like beasts and things that have existed that have you know disappeared from the world or are they hidden in dungeons and stuff like that so i'm not the best person for that answer yeah i've not i'm yeah i'm not either i don't i I'm not saying that people work with demons or bad people or something, but it's like, I feel like why uh, angels have your best interest for you and you might go through well, a little hardship too, but then again, they're all in the same hierarchy. So I don't want to judge either, you know? Well, you want to know what the difference is, what I've known from the, the people who practice black magic and darker magic is, um, well, I don't believe magic has a color, but you know, the term black magic, but, um, I, I would say that it's about instant gratification. The demons can give you instant gratification. They're, they feed on lust, 
they feed on um, desire, uh, a negative desire. And um, I think that, I think that, you know, demons are about instant gratification. Angels are about hard work. And that's why people go to demons. That's why they make deals with lower vibrational entities because they might be able to manifest something faster. Mm, Emergency magic. Go to the demon, right? Do you really need that though? I mean, there's got to be other forms of emergency magic, you know? I've seen people's lives ruined by demons. I don't even want to say the names of them. I could say, I could say one of the names, but of of the demon, but um, I know people who I think, I think certain celebrities have worked with lower vibrational entities to get to where they've gotten. And I've seen the, the deals that they've made and the chaos that came with that. And it's dark. And I think you don't have to go down that route. I think that's a very desperate route. I would go with your angels, go with the, the deceased ancestors or relatives and, the, the, the light beings who are out there for your higher consciousness and, and make your life a magical, positive experience rather than the darker side of it. Because some people just lust for that darkness. I mean, Manson's a yes. great example of that. Yeah, I've met those people. Like, you, you, you talk to them about magic, and immediately, it's kind of like in Star Wars, they go straight to the dark side every time. And you're like, you know, it's cool to learn about this stuff. It's cool to understand it. And maybe if you have to practice it every now and then, but why, you know, I don't know. Like I, there are people that just jump straight towards it. They go right towards almost like the people that want to, I wonder if it, well, I wonder if it's the same mentality of like people that like really gory horror films, you know, and they can't wait yeah. till the movie comes out and they line up to see it. Those kind of people. Yeah. And, yeah. I, I agree. I know. I agree with you. And look, I, I don't think aesthetically being interested in, in darker art and all that kind of stuff is a bad thing that that's the, you know, maybe you're more of a Scorpio type person, but I think, um, this is real life shit. And, and if you, if, if you're doing this, it, it's not, it's not a joke, you know, and, right. and you can really, really hurt yourself. And, um, if you, if you go to the, to the, darker part of magic and and you know people abuse the satanic bible all the time and i think um hexing and cursing it's it's always going to come back to you there's no way that it won't i see the people who've done that kind of magic all of them have common factors of suffering yeah no doubt yeah you know even uh that guy that was on last night was talking about how he was trying to learn from a warlock. And he said, but this guy was doing dark magic all the time. And he was paranoid all the time. He always thought someone was out to get him and never was happy. And those kind of things, you know, um, that's like a sign of a lower vibrational entity messing with you. Right. Yeah. But you know, again, then again, the angels kind of make things a little hard on us, but I feel so blessed when I understand what they're doing. You know, when you talk about in your book how you started seeing the like triple numbers and stuff, you started realizing that you were tapping into higher realms and things. It, even if it's almost like even if I do have a hard lesson coming, I'm almost still gr- grateful for it. It still feels like love to me. It, and that it might be a strong love. word. Because it's love and it's because it's your soul's work. You you can feel the fulfillment. It goes straight into your to your soul when, when you experience that. And that's why... I also I also believe that magic always works even if you don't get the thing that you wanted you had to you, it shows you what you need to change about yourself to get to where you want to get to and that's why I say you know there's no failure in a spell because everything that you experience through magic is information about yourself and how to change and how to evolve your soul and I think that gets lost a lot in occult literature What are your thoughts and beliefs on a holy guardian angel. Do you believe you have one? Oh yeah, of course I do. And I, I also believe um, we can invent our own angels and gods and goddesses. And, and, really? and um, yes. And I think um, I would encourage people to, to create their own angels with certain purposes and qualities um, and elements. And, and, and you can see their work in your life show up, but um I think uh, I think we do have a higher self. I think we exist as the midpoint between our soul, um, our ego, and we are pure consciousness and pure awareness. And we can sustain that 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 point of observance 
we can listen to our holy self and our our angel and whatever it is, our higher self, whatever we want to call it, and we can make beautiful decisions. Whereas our ego is our enemy in in the, the most serious way. I mean, anytime I've tried to feed my ego, it's just an illusion. It's always going to be a video game. It's always going to be a mental throne. It's never going to fulfill you in the way working on your soul work will. You know what? Now I'm glad you said that because now I understand. Like you know how earlier we were talking about. Well, I don't want to practice magic. I'm afraid of the success because I'm afraid of my own success, kind of thing. Like I'm, I get afraid of ego stuff. Like what I was telling you before. Like every now and then, be like, oh my gosh, I'm talking to Joe Roop. Like I don't, you know, you've experienced that too. You were telling me, and it's like it doesn't even feel right. And I'm afraid that I'm gonna fall into that that thing is that ego i mean what is that like i don't even yeah no no it, it, it of course because you, you know there are certain i've i've learned this from seeing so working with so many famous people and celebrities and seeing people who who have that um hologram version of themselves and they have to juggle that hologram versions of themselves some people don't want to get out of it and i think what we have to understand is, is that the ego in ourselves is no different than being like a kid on the playground playing make believe. You know, you're always going to be in your head. You're going to be isolated from empathy and, and people and, and in your imagination, in your own world, which can be positive at times. But it's always going to be a high and a low and you're going to be controlled by the highs and the lows. So I think you can have the level of dreams and success that you desire, but it requires a level of kind of zero identification with what is happening and trying to sustain that as a spiritual person. And it's extremely difficult because anytime something good happens, you want to believe that's me, that's me, that's me. And you want to plug into it. But um, observing it is so much less of a chaotic experience because the ego is so chaotic. Yeah, right. I mean, those people are super famous, like Marilyn Manson. So they get it every day, all day by everybody. How can you not identify with that? It's like it's almost like you're forced to. I mean, wouldn't it be hard to just constantly deny that you're just normal like everybody else 24 seven? You know, like, how does that? I see what you're saying, though. You got to learn. Yeah, for sure. I think. Yeah, I think I think um, I think Manson thinks he's a demigod, which is in a way some people would agree he is. But I think um, the en- the entity he's created of Marilyn Manson is always going to be a, a man made creation of of who he is, and, and there's always going to be a sep- separate separateness between that. And same goes with Madonna and, and any other celebrity who created this idea of power for us to perceive them it's always going to come from a mortal and a human way but um in in our own lives you know between our public and private selves we have to create that that balance and you're right when people start to say you're this or i saw you on this and all that kind of stuff you, you start to feel isolated and separatist and that's the opposite of spirituality so yeah it is really scary sometimes very good answer thank you so much for saying that alex kazemi our guest tonight alex kazemi dot kazemi excuse me dot com uh go get the book pop magic you can get it on kindle too you can get the physical copies on amazon simon schuster we'll be right back stay with us 1-800-588-0335 is a call in number the phones are open stay with us sorry This is Rev. Dan Lopez from Spiritual Warrior Today Radio, and you're listening to KTLK, The Fringe FM. OMG, people are jumping on board to the Life Change Tea Regiment. Brew, steep, and drink for a gentle, taste-great cleanse. It's changing how they feel. See what everybody's talking about. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Life Change Tea aids in digestive slowdown and helps people get moving down a healthy path. We won't make claims. We'll just let you decide. Experience is much better than a commercial anyway. If you want results, log on to GetTheTea.com and purchase your super strength cleansing tea. You won't be disappointed. And if you're looking for some mind-body suggestions, go to YouTube and punch in the search bar Health Matters Now. That's Health 
matters now. Put power into your health now. So get the tea.com. That's get the tea.com for super strength tea. And YouTube, Health Matters Now. That's Health Matters Now for valuable suggestions. Get the tea.com. The tea that makes you go. So you love talk radio. Then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on 24-7 with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the the iTunes App Store. Hi, this is David Owen with House at the End of the Drive.com. You're listening to KTLK, The Fringe FM. Do you want to know the truth? Are UFOs real? Are aliens visiting Earth? Are governments around the world hiding the biggest secret in history? We're UFO Seekers, official partner of The Fringe FM, and we're on a hunt for the truth. Join us as we investigate locations like Area 51 by subscribing on YouTube at youtube.com slash UFO Seekers. This is Kronox from Belgium, and you're listening to Lighting the Void with Joe Roop. Hey, Fringe FM listeners. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or no Wi-Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of the Fringe FM by calling 701-719-3971. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. Saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Call 701-719-3971. That's 701-719-3971. Listen to the Fringe FM on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Alex Exum. This is Alex Exum of the Exum Experience and Live Talk, where we discuss current events, society, and culture. My shows are based in actuality, actual existence, contrasted with what was intended, expected, or believed. You can listen to me live Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 7 p.m. only on KTLK, The Fringe FM. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation, and Angioprim is the result. A safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now to angioprim.com. That's A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M.com. Or to speak with a trained consultant, give Angioprim a call at 954-882-7221. That's 954-882-7221. This is Reverend John M. Polk, and you are listening to KTLK Digital Broadcasting right here on TheFringe.fm. Alex, man, I gotta say, it's really cool to, uh, I almost wish that sometimes people would hear what we talk about, you know, during the breaks, because it's really cool to talk to somebody. I relate a lot to you when it comes to magic, and honestly, I, I've had a lot of magicians on the show, man, that I don't really relate with, and and when it comes to a lot of things, and I relate a lot to you, because you love the Kabbalah, you love ritual, you understand emotion and energy, and I'm really actually very grateful, man, that you wrote the book that you did and that you're getting it out there. So thank you. 
Thank you so much. And, I, and I'm so grateful to, to be here connecting to you, you know, days before the full moon. And it feels like a positive, magical occurrence. And hopefully together we could inspire people tonight and, and inspire people to be open to magic and, and the positive possibilities and, you know, kind of healing the spiritual poverty we're in in our world today. Yeah, because, you know, I was talking to you. Yeah, I totally agree. And I was talking to you during the break about masculine and feminine energy and we have this idea of of that's a super magical thing by the way right like when you do a ritual you're combining like both of those energies if you really think about it and to one and it's like uh we have these ideas of masculine and feminine energy that i think are kind of i don't want to say outdated but it, you said it was a construct right like it's more of like a construct in our minds that we yeah, might need to change it can be a way of programming and and, and and dogma and that that doesn't really affect you in a positive way and i like what you said i think that when we do ritual magic we are combining the polarity of masculine and feminine and and there's there's something about being at peace with those qualities in ourselves and not viewing those things as negative or viewing those things as as something to be ashamed of rather than to be something to be at peace with you know a lot of the negative beliefs we we inherit are from society and and conditioning and and a code and magic is all about breaking free from code and barriers and and all of that kind of stuff so it it, it, when you when you start practicing magic that type of stuff starts to shatter there's no way you can practice magic and not have all of that shatter because it's just so artificial at that point yeah, I totally agree. I want to give you this construct I have in my mind and tell me what you think. So I feel like the lower worlds or the material worlds, if you want to look at it like a figure eight, let's say like one side is the material world, the manifested plane. And then yeah. where the figure eight crosses, there's the astral realm where the Sephiroth live and uh, the psychic yeah. realm and all this stuff. And where they cross, there's a doorway there. And that doorway yeah. is our subconscious, I kind of think. Do you agree with that? Wow. Yeah, no, that's really, really cool to think about. Yeah, the, the subconsciousness could be the entrance to to, to that and, and also the, the gate and, and the point and and what we put in that subconsciousness, uh, you, we can choose which way to go. You know, we can we can go to that place where we can work on the sephirots within our soul and and rectify those negative attributes and, and change those things and 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 we can also stay in in the lower worlds i find that in material world i find that practicing magic i i find that when i do my spells and, and my rituals and i do manifest material world things it's it's not as fulfilling as as helping others and and because i think when we do that um, it it immediately some it's like something's going on in the upper worlds. It, it, it's do you, do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, I kind of do. I kind of yeah. 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 yeah, like it, it's it's like a transaction. It's almost like mirrored in the upper worlds. Rather, when we attain things in the material world, it usually appeals to the ego, and the ego is usually really empty. So there's something that feels more powerful about sharing and, and helping others and it almost feels like our more upper world higher self that maybe new age people would call but um th- we definitely feel our best when we're operating off of our higher and uh self yeah because it's um you know in the construct of the golden dawn they look at kether and all of the all of the higher realms is they even have their like grade system to, uh based on that and, and they want you to you know, they want you to develop your elemental stuff first before you ever cross what they call the veil, the veil of Paraketh, right? Before you cross um, Yesod and you get to like all of that, that section where that middle section where Tifereth is. So they want you to yeah. work out your elements and work out your elemental nature before you start yeah. messing with planets and things like that. And now a lot of people are like, ah, man, you just skip all that and stuff. I, I wonder still to this day sometimes, though, I don't want to say it's a linear process. But it's almost like when we don't work out something like that, we go- we do see the chaos from it that comes back and manifests uh, in a way. Does that make sense yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But I also think, you know, 
you can if you if you start to study the tree of life and the sephirot and you understand those attributes you could start to to see those traits that you possess in yourself and maybe that come from your astrological chart or are in your soul and you can do that work right away and see it and and rectify the correction in, into a positive trait you know you might have a lower or maybe a negative bina energy that you need to change into a positive bina and I think um, I, I would advocate people who study Kabbalah or the Tree of Life to kind of try to see the Sephirots in yourself and, and in your soul. Um, and, and that's my way of climbing from Malkuth to Kether. That's really cool, man. And do you ever do you ever integrate any Eastern stuff into your practices? Um. I study, I've studied, before writing the book, I've studied all different re religions and alchemy and, and magic and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and I, I kind of, I like to take, I think we should all take things that we think we identify with in our soul's instincts like the most into our own practice. But um, I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I, I like Buddhism a lot and I like uh, the idea of everything is is divine and everything is is empty at the same time and and coexisting in that space and accepting that yeah exactly yeah i do too what are your viewpoints on uh faith because there's this one guy that i learned magic from who really kind of taught me it was a youtube guy named uh, freighter xavier and that's when i first started learning stuff and he kind of grew up like me you know his dad kind of beat christianity into his head and that was one of the things that was programmed into his head was bible verses and these kinds of things however you know he's not a christian now and neither am i not really i mean no i'm not i would pretty much pretty sure i'm not and and but but still yet there's a thing about faith like like when you talk about angels like i'm trying to explain it alex like the knowing that everything's going to be okay or I have faith. Yeah. That... Yeah. Yeah. It's like a secure attachment. It's like yeah. a secure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, and I think also, um, Christianity can sometimes bring order to chaos. And I think, um, have, having that template of the value system and morals and all that stuff, you should create your own morals and your more, more own ethics and your own values through magic and alchemy. But I, I think, you know, there, there could be a higher source, a highest God, you know, the highest energy that you can access, whether it's by creating it as a conscious idea. Um, and it maybe it's all in our head, but I, I think there, or there could be a higher power watching over us or, you know, in Kabbalah, they call it the light or the light of the creator. And I think, um, I think weird enough, as I practice so much magic and, and alchemy, there there is an appeal to having a sense of order out of the chaos um, and not through religion specifically, but just having, a, like you said, a spiritual system of morals and ethics and values to rely on. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like uh, when people, I, I find myself in moments of fear and maybe it's just maybe I do the like the Crowley thing or I learned from the Golden Dawn where they say, you know, fear is a fetter that binds. It's the enemy kind of thing. And in my experience, yeah. it definitely is the enemy. It definitely keeps you from alchemizing or ascending or whatever you want to call it. But I wonder sometimes if I don't just dangerously run into it just because, oh, you know, I'm afraid of something. So now I'm just going to go straight at it because that's always been my mentality. But I'm an Aries, too. So, you know. <laughs> We tend to trip up sometimes when that happens. Uh, yeah, sign when, of war. Yeah, when fight or flight happens, I've never in my entire life ran. Never. Um, but I, fi yeah. I find that weak for some reason. But maybe it's the smart thing to do sometimes, you know? Um. Yeah, I think, I think you know, fear is usually false evidence appearing real. You know, I think, you know, I think a lot of us, spend a lot of time in fear and worrying about things that will never happen. And we'll probably, when we're older, look back at our lives and be like, Oh wow. I spent a lot of time worrying about nothing that <laughs> yeah. ever happened. And, a lot of energy, right? And a time on it. Yeah. Yeah. But I think, um, if we can sustain a meditative state of just observing it and not engaging with it, we see that it's not facts. You know, your feelings are not facts and, and your thoughts in your head are not facts. Right. And we live in an era 
where people treat opinions as facts. And I think that uh, we have to remember there's dozens, maybe thousands of cognitive distortions in our minds every day. And, and fear is a part of that. And, you know, it's, it's a, it can be kind of a form of resistance, but to beat that is to, to ignore it and yeah. to, to, and that's how you f- defeat it. Yeah. Cause there's a definite difference in intuition, like an inner knowing and, yeah. and emotion. Like, so <clears throat> emotion is one of those things where, you know, I was involved with somebody once where like, just because they felt an emotion that was uh, the ultimate truth. And I'm like, but you know, you realize your brain triggered that emotion. You realize that the mind thought of something and now you have that emotion. So the only truth yeah. is, is that you feel this emotion when you have this thought, it's not the ultimate truth of reality, you know? Um, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and sometimes it, it benefits us in the moment to react in a way in a, in an emotion, but our emotions should be self-validated, but I don't think um, it's fair to ask for people to validate our emotions because we, our experiences are so subjective, you know, and I think um, exactly everything you just said, it's just really about particularly the moment and, and, and kind of pushing that agenda onto people is not very magical because magic is, is really about self-reliance and self-preservation as much as it is about unification and helping others. Yeah. I can see where people get it tossed up too, because I've said things like I feel, and I don't really mean my emotions, even though my emotions are evolved. But a lot of times what I mean is d- deep down, I, f- I intuitively know something that I want yeah, no, to investigate, you. you know? Yeah. You know, and, and there is a difference. There is a difference between, being like and hearing an insecure like debris thought of I'm not good enough versus like an actual intuition that oh maybe I shouldn't go there or go to that party or do that thing tonight because mm-hmm. that's not a good idea for my goals or or that is a distraction or there is something that will trigger me into an addictive state if I go there or something like that you know there's there are those real intuitions versus you know, um, just the, the brain is, is just a machine and it's just generating all these kind of thoughts. You just have to rake through it. You have to be in a state where you can observe it because a lot of people, and I used to be one of them, was I would be in those realities of the fears of, you know, the, the OCD cognitive distortions. And, and it was exhausting and it threw me around for a long time. Really? You don't seem like that kind of guy, actually, at all. You seem pretty... So, but we all go through stuff, you de- you know, so I could see how that happening to anybody. So that's cool that you beat that because I've yeah, beat that no, before too. Yeah, it was too. really hard. Yeah, I, I used to be full of anxieties and fears and I, and I would engage with them and I would believe in them and I would push my fears onto everyone else and want safety and reassurance for that reason. And it was it was not until I had realized that the for, through transcendental meditation and, and practicing meditation is that, you know, the thoughts in our head are not real and they're not, we have a free will to choose if we engage with them or not and react to them. We have a choice on how we react to things. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. That's a part of that. And uh, you speaking of the Kabbalah, do you feel like when I talk about kosher Kabbalah here, you know how those rabbis and stuff, like if back in the day, and some of them still believe in this, like if you go and you start studying Kabbalah way too young, they don't really like that. They want you to wait till you're like 40 or whatever. But I know that's changing. But sometimes I wonder, like, is there because I'm, you know, I'm almost 40 now. And I feel like I'm just starting to really discover who I really am, you know. And I wonder if there is something to that progression of human growth, the linear process of of age and and wisdom and understanding you know what i mean and then you're ready to to study something deeper instead of jumping into it and you know getting confused i don't know i could be wrong about that though no well that's really interesting because madonna's kabbalah era you know the ray of light album was when she was 40 and and i think um that 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 corresponded with with those old kabbalistic uh arcane rules which which i agree are, are are i think there there are lots of people when they hit 40 they they find a sense of or around that era they they, they they're looking for a sense of self-discovery and 
and and self spirituality and, and all that kind of stuff. But I think um, uh, certain souls and certain paths might be uh, on a journey where they learn Kabbalistic knowledge early. Like there's a Kabbalah teacher who started practicing when he was like 16 and be as a teacher to, and now he's like in his late or early thirties, you know? So it is, it is, it's very interesting how, how we all have these different ways of stumbling upon our spirituality. And, and I, and I do agree that sometimes there's a truth to these rules, uh, not rules, but these theories or, or beliefs about when we discover certain magic like Kabbalah, which I believe is the most powerful form of magic. Yeah, I do too. It's just hard to prove. Like, do you ever, do you ever practice a uh, scrying anything like, do you do that? They call oh, it like no. scrying See, and spirit vision. I haven't scried, but I think um, that I think also magic is also about instincts, right? You know, if you're, my book talks a lot about honing your own magical instincts. So if you're not interested in sigil magic, don't force yourself to be into it. And scrying and, and, and psychic stuff actually has been something that I haven't been intuitively drawn to. And maybe as I spiritually grow and my, my magical practice just grows, maybe I'll get into tarot one day and maybe things things will change and I'll study that stuff. But as of now, no, I, I haven't I haven't done that. That's so fascinating to me because you don't do tarot, which I, know, I heard you say earlier, and most people are into tarot, but, it, you know, it is it does feel like you know, I don't want to say this cause I don't want to have everybody. I'm, I'm so afraid of what I'm going to say cause people are going to do it because I said it kind of thing, but it does feel like it's a kind of overwhelming to add a, another thing because tarot is a lifelong school. The Kabbalah is a lifelong school. Astrology is a lifelong school. Um, you know, the Hebrew language is a lifelong school kind of thing. And then in magic, you have all of these lifelong schools <laughs> on top of each other so that's exactly how i feel about tarot that's literally what i've said to someone is like i can't i can't it can't i can't put it on my plate like there's it's just too much like it's i would just my brain would explode you know at least right now like it's 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 just on another level i have so much respect for tarot practitioners and i have friends who are witches who read me my read me their tarot and i and i and i think tarot cards are extremely powerful you know i'm i'm fine with like a deck of you know magical cards that you can just shuffle and ask your guides like can you please send me a message i'm down for that that's pretty simple but um the other stuff is is pretty next level and i don't mean that in a way that i couldn't handle it it's just something that i would not invite on my path right now yeah, I get that, man. Like, but I'm so drawn to all of it, <laughs> you know, astrology. I mean, astrology is a life for sure is a lifelong study. And I, I cannot stress to people how much BS is out there. Like I heard on Rogan the other day, they were, <clears throat> he was asking Sturgill Simpson and his band about astrology. And they were like, oh, you know, a horoscopes, that's just BS. It's just something somebody made up. And it, they didn't as for as smart as these people are doing these shows and as smart as Rogan is, it's almost like, you know, there's bias there because he, they jumped straight from astrology to horoscopes and didn't even discuss astrology. And it's frustrating to hear because this guy's getting millions of views and influencing people. And it's like, yeah, but you're not really telling the truth about astrology and what all of it consists of and those kinds of things, you know? But I'll let that go. Yeah, yeah, no, I no, of course, and it and it's extremely frustrating how cynical people are of astrology because it could change their self understanding of themselves. It could um, paying attention to the astrological transits can, can and the coincidences. Like I say in my book, there's no such thing as coincidences. Coincidences only magic. Um, I think that paying attention to these patterns and this this data can be extremely powerful in your life and the archetypes of astrology are, are so powerful and, and your bir- learning about your birth chart can change your life. And, and, uh, I just, I just can't understand how, I mean, didn't haven't, didn't they use astrology like in ancient Greece and stuff? Yeah, that was, it was an actual science back in the day. Like these the people, there's so many books and books we'll never read too. that were burned and from the library of Alexandria and all that, like astronomy and astrology were not really separate things at one time. 
And it and yeah. magic and science were once the same thing. Anton Lavey said also. Yeah, and it's like they took it away because they didn't have. They started what they started doing is like, well, we don't have instruments to measure these results, so therefore, it's not really true or scientific. But it, they, it's like they took out probability. No one wanted. No one was explaining how it worked. They just knew, hey. When there's this type of alignment, these things happen. Well, if it happens enough, it, it to me, it should be a truth. It should be validated, regardless of if you understand how it works. That's how magic is. Like, it's true to me. I know it's a theory, but it works because I've journaled. I've practiced enough. I know it's real. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's that's something that's very frustrating as a magical practitioner is people don't understand that i'm not a stupid person like i'm studying the data like i'm studying the coincidences i'm paying attention i wouldn't just say this is real if i hadn't had studied all the variables in my own experiences along with the astrological transits along with the bizarre astrological coincidences with certain people with certain placements it's just too much data and, and, and synchronicities that are, are, are more powerful than perception. It's really weird. And I, I would hope the people who read, if they read my book, that they, they also practice their own idea of, of figuring out how to understand the variables of magic around them. Yeah, I hope you're right. And just in case people are wondering, as we reach the top of the hour here, that book is Pop Magic, A Simple Guide to Bending Your Reality by our guest tonight alex kazemi we only have a few more minutes left here with alex you guys so if you want to get your questions in now's the time we'll be right back in your face all over the place we're online 24 7 24 7 you're listening to the hottest internet station listen i want to tell you about gi joy from get the tea.com it's the best alchemical concoction of goodies for your stomach and digestive system i can recommend and that's all based on my experience packed with colostrum acidophilus aloe peppermint and turmeric if you do your own research then you know this is the bee's knees for the stomach and digestion Now, due to Big Brother's ears and the eye in the sky, you know I can't go into the details about what it helped me with. All I can say is, I got relief. It's non-GMO, no fillers, no preservatives, manufactured right here in the U.S. of A., and delivered to you by the only people who stay on top of the game and are out in front. Go grab a bottle of G.I. Joy at GetTheTea.com and see what all the fuss is about. Again, that's GetTheTea.com. AncientLifeOil.com. For your CBD needs, just remember, AncientLifeOil.com. What does it do for the body, you ask? I can't say you do the people in the suits that run the industry. Big Farm is all over CBD because of its H-E, well, you know what I mean. Research the benefits of CBD on Google and come back to AncientLifeOil.com and purchase your CBD today non-GMO, and all organic. You don't want to be using a petroleum product. You want to be using the cleanest CBD product on the market, ancientlifeoil.com. We even have CBD for your pet. Help your pet's discomfort. Help your discomfort. Log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Newly reduced prices to pass off the savings to the most important person, you, ancientlifeoil.com. And one more thing, we have topicals too. So if you have joint pain and some different issues that are going on in your body, you might want to use a topical. Think about it, ancientlifeoil.com. Hi, this is Aaron Hunter, host of Real Paranormal Activity, the podcast where we tell real paranormal experiences of people from around the world. And we also conduct interviews with authors, investigators, psychics, and mediums. Real people. Real stories, real fear. Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern on The Fringe FM. See you then. 
My name is Jake. I'm from Billings, Montana, and I am a Void Walker. Hey, Joe Root. Thanks for lighting the void. This is Janine in the bluegrass of Kentucky, and I am a Void Walker. What's up, guys? This is Danny from San Marcos, Texas, and I'm a Void Walker. I listen to the show to keep myself aligned with the world. Hi, this is Laura, a.k.a. Laura Lavender. I'm from Las Vegas, and I listen to Lighting the Void because it helps me understand some of the strangest experiences I've had. So thanks for all that you do and for always being there for us, Joe. You can tug all day long on a carpet that's been glued to the floor. Then you hurt. There are many strong glues out there. Let's see. There's liquid nails and Gorilla Glue. You ever try to remove 3M5200? That adhesive is strong. Then there's bathroom caulk, silicone rubber, adhesive tape, super glue, flex tape, and stickers. Graffiti. Scientists have come up with glues that stay stuck and can't be removed. Until now. Until Handyman Formula by DeBond. That's right. 95% of adhesives become unstuck when you spray Handyman Formula directly on them. Just spray, wait a few minutes, and remove. It's amazing. Most adhesives become unstuck when you use Handyman Formula. Visit DeBondCorporation.com or MCMaster.com. Call 561-575-4200. This stuff really works. Handyman Formula by DeBond, a great Christmas gift ever seen an extraterrestrial? It can be hard to believe they exist unless you've seen one for yourself. What if I told you I've seen them my whole life but have never had a witness who shared the encounter with me? Now, what if I told you I saw four of them, two with blue skin, and there are over 20 witnesses to this CE5 event? My new book, The Blue Beings, Visitation at the UFO Conference, documents actual accounts from real witnesses many of which have gone on record to attest to this otherworldly reality. Be a part of the quantum paradigm shift that is taking place right now. Go to johnpolkmedia.com to get your copy of the Blue Beans Visitation at the UFO Conference on sale right now at johnpolkmedia.com. That's J-O-H-N-P-O-L-K media.com. This is the Rogi Report News on the Fringe FM. I'm Jess Rogi. The Antarctic Peninsula is one of the fastest warming regions on Earth. The peninsula's two major glaciers, the Thwaites Glacier and the Pine Island Glacier, are retreating towards the mainland faster than new ice can form, revealing the continent's coast a little more each year. The retreating ice revealed an uncharted island that has long been buried underneath the ice, but finally visible above sea level for the first time. Researchers with the International Thwaites Glacier Offshore Research Project discovered the island while sailing off the coast of Pine Island Glacier. The small island is only about 1,150 feet long and mostly covered in ice, but rises from the sea with a brown rock distinct from the surrounding glaciers and iceberg. Researchers have tentatively named the uncharted outcropping Sif Island, after the Norse goddess associated with Earth. According to UFO researcher Diane Tessman, the author of Future Humans and UFO says the USS Nimitz Tic Tac UFO could actually be piloted by human-like AI or living humans not from this Earth. She explained that the USS Nimitz returned to the same place year after year and entire squadrons have been seen on radar shortly before the encounter. Tessman theorizes that the intelligence piloting the mysterious craft is not only human-like, but actually human. Our own species time-traveling from the future to observe its history. NASA is tracking a massive asteroid. The colossal asteroid is being tracked by NASA's automated systems at the Center for Near-Earth Object Studies in California. The asteroid has officially been dubbed 52768 and it's estimated to measure up to 2.5 miles across. The asteroid will fly by Earth on April 29th. And when this happens, NASA said the asteroid will make a close approach to our planet. According to the Planetary Society, an asteroid bigger than 0.6 miles across is big enough to threaten global destruction. Astronomers estimate such objects have a 1 in 50,000 chance of hitting Earth every 100 years. MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network, released its UFO sighting numbers for February. 
540 UFO sightings were reported, and 430 of those sightings took place in the United States, followed by 34 in the UK and 33 in Canada. The top three states to report UFO sightings were California, Florida, and Texas. The top reported shape was circle crafts at 104. There were reports of 18 landings, hovering, or takeoffs, as well as 14 entities observed. This is the Rogi Report News on the Fringe FM. I'm Jess Rogi. Kazemi, our guest tonight. Man, I gotta say too, like I was talking to Alex during the break about how I've talked to so I have talked to so many magicians on the show, man. You wouldn't believe. Middle Eastern magicians, chaos magicians, Renaissance magicians, uh uh black magicians, every kind of magician, Thelemites, and I really want everybody to know this. People that have been listening to my show for a long time, like I do seriously resonate with with you and what you are writing about in this book man it's i'm not saying i didn't resonate with all these other people because i do but i feel like i can relate to you more because i we, we come from two different sides of uh you know the country or whatever but i i feel like i've had the same kind of uh walk of course i haven't talked to Marilyn manson or anything like that but you know you know what i mean like understanding the beauty of the old uh renaissance magic the kabbalah these types of things learning that uh you know the higher worlds and angels are really there to help us and even learning about banishing and bindings like i used to do banishing rituals every day man but i don't do that every, uh anymore i mean every single day do you practice wow. magic every day like ritual every day yeah yeah i have to i i find that if i don't call on to the upper worlds for protection or angels though they're there but I think something changes when you call on a god or a goddess to to be there. You know, I think also even I I don't know if you've ever felt like this, but sometimes when when you're practicing magic, it feels like you're peeling off layers of reality, and and you can sometimes feel like you're creating a new layer, and it's like an onion, and you're peeling off peeling off the layer. And I find that I get that feeling the most when I do ritual magic. So I do do it every day. And I, I think I'm I'm really happy that you can feel a sense of connection with this magic and and a practical system and, and, and making it in a way where we can understand it and explain it to people to help others. Yeah. I get really deep with it too, man. Sometimes it depends. Like, uh, I always run out of candles. Like I'm about out of candles now. It's like, I don't buy enough and people are like, we'll do a candle spell. Right. Well, I understand that if you do like a black candle spell or a certain thing, but Sometimes I really want to get into the the mood of the ritual, and I will fill up my temple with candles. Man, it'll look like a uh, like a cathedral in there, you know. And Whoa, it helps. That's so cool. Yeah, man, it helps trigger. You know, it helps trigger the because even though I'm an emotional guy, like there's sometimes I'm in the wrong mood, and I know well this is the time for me to do this certain thing. I need to get in that yeah. way so I can. You know what I mean? Like I can change my outside environment to change how oh, I yeah, feel yeah, inside. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. It's your sensory experience, right? It can inflict, uh, it can inflict instincts in you to feel more magic. I mean, if I just see those beautiful ritual candles, like the the colors, or, or I see them in an occult store, I just feel a sense of safety. I feel seen. I feel connection. Yeah, exactly. And then you know, and the it whole... makes you want to do magic. Right. As like, as within, so without, you know, I believe in that so much. And if you're feeling bad, like on the inside people, I've told people this too, Alex, Thomas, so you know what, if you feel cluttered or bad or unsure, you, your brain doesn't know and uh, all this kind of stuff, like you could just clean your environment and organize everything, get real feng shui with it. Even if you want to, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. And then your environment changes your inside. You'll, calm down you'll start to feel happy and then it'll or maybe it's just me but i feel like that works you know no no for sure it's like it's like mirroring our 
our soul shards, you know, the things that things that are tactile that we identify with, you know, sometimes, you know, even seeing magical symbols or in my environment or having an angel statue or whatever, it, there's there's just something that, that that seeing the the internal being mirrored in the external that is so powerful and everyone should create that experience for what works best for their instincts, you know, whatever magical aesthetic they feel drawn to, whether it's hoodoo, sanitaria, whatever, you can create your own combination of paganism, whatever aesthetic Wicca to, to be what you want, the magical system that you want as well. Now uh, I'm looking at your book here and I'm only on chapter four. There's 30 chapters in here. And I can't wait to get into the rest of it, but there is a chapter that's got my attention that I've never, I don't think I've ever seen anybody write about it. It says, um, sexuality and gender shape shifting. What's, what's yeah. that about? Um, that I wrote, I wrote that about, um, people who practice magic, who, who have, a kind of sense of experience where their their souls uh feel more open to shatter their ideas about gender and sexuality and certain people want to experiment and shape shift like grant morrison would talk about that with the uh when he wrote the invisibles how he would go out and drag and experiment and do all this weird stuff and it's just kind of about breaking through the barriers and, and the people who who are practicing magic who have that experience but that's not everyone's experience obviously sure. but it's it, i wanted to bring light to the stories i've heard from girls who've practiced magic and they're like oh well maybe i like girls now or because i i see people as souls and not genders and, and binaries and so it's just about the idea of expanding consciousness like adding a new consciousness to our minds and, and seeing our openness to experiment with whatever, not just sexuality or gender, but whatever. You know, one of my favorite chapters that you have in here is, is titled how the F do I know when magic works? That's, that's a good thing to write about, man. Like seriously. I'm so happy you're saying this right now because when I wrote that chapter, all I wanted was for someone to understand how it's just so important that, someone in the occult community just clearly explained some theories about how it works because I've read all these magic books and nothing tells you how does it work. How, no, nothing explains it simply in a methodical, medical, clinical kind of simple way. And it was such a relief to write that down. It was such a great relief to do that chapter. Yeah, it's because even though sometimes I've done so much you know, I've done so much magic once before, like I did this experiment where I was doing sigil magic and doing it so much that I was forcing myself to forget about the other sigils, which is something I wanted to do, you know, um, because I feel like once we let it go, it would manifest, but then you start forgetting about what you cast for. So you don't really know if it manifests too, when, when I was doing that and I was doing experiments to try to figure out how do I know it works so I can explain this type of thing. And you're right. Like nobody writes about that. And I've, anybody that's listened to the show, I've asked, I've even been laughed at for asking questions like that. Like, hey, how does magic work? And they're like, oh, uh, you know, they get all kind of snooty about it. And I'm thinking that should be like a basic question for everybody, right? You know? Oh, a hundred percent. It should be a basic question. And, and there's such a sense of, uh, I actually give examples in that chapter of how certain real life spells manifest with practical applications of the decisions that you make that are corresponding with the spell. And um, that was also a relief to do too. And it's bizarre that it's considered to be snooty because I think figuring out these theories could bring us closer to more results for all of us. If we know how it works, you know, which we don't, which makes it fascinating and interesting, but throwing out some theories and, and learning theories from other people it can maybe create more magical results for all of us as practitioners. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, what's on everybody's mind too, is like the whole, uh, <clears throat> Tantra sex magic thing. And I don't really, I don't talk about that with people because it's like in your book, you kind of, you, I kind of agree with you about that. Like we're taught, like you took an app, which I, I think we've all tried is like Tinder, And it's just such a letdown. If you're like me and you have emotions and you're attached to your emotions a little bit, 
like we're always trying to uh it's not we're always like leaving that stuff out of the equation now we're just a face on an app or something you know and it's like what happened to the whole process or the alchemical process of that you know that thing you know hooking up like the game of it falling in love you know going through that experience that thing that why we're here and and life is one of the greatest things about life and now we've digitized it to this thing like nope nope no yes no 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 okay now i can practice quote sex magic and i think that's ridiculous man yeah i think also uh it's dangerous for magical i think for some magical practitioners to do hookups and stuff because they're uh, we can in, uh, take pe- take on people's traumas and energies uh, if we're open and, and it can be a kind of transference. And if there's not that level of trust and intimacy of, of, of creating that, that bond to materialize through sex or sex magic, um, it can, it can be dark and, and you could be maybe receptive to psychic attack and all, and, and other things. It's not something I'm saying as a fear tactic to listeners. I'm just saying from, people I know who practice magic, who have, um, down hookups and all that kind of stuff. They've noticed certain experiences that are, you know, traumas get transferred to them and energies and sometimes they get physically sick and it's very bizarre. Yeah. It does feel like you're given, I've always thought that too, man. Like I'm giving my, I'm not going to give my power away that you, I feel like that's one of the most specific and choosing things. You could be in a long time ago. It's like, I would never talk about those types of things, but now it's rampant, man, in the magical community, rampant, you know, even, uh, you know, but I don't want to judge either, man, because what do I know? Right. Like I'm not no, this no, guy no, no, that no. knows yeah, everything, but, anymore. but I don't want, it's almost like I don't want that to go away. Maybe I'm old school and traditional. I don't know, but getting to know somebody falling in love and being kind of choosy about who you share your energy with should be important. I think I just, I just think, Oh yeah, it's extremely powerful. It's extremely powerful. And I even talk about in the, the book, how, um, how pornography is destroying a lot of young men and, 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 and sex magic alchemy is, is something I write about also and, and alchemizing that energy to, to a higher source as well. So, so yeah, I'm going through the book here. I'm scanning through it. I'm going to read. I can't wait to read the rest of this book. I highly suggest that my audience gets this book. I mean this with, from the bottom of my heart. Every one of you, like, get grab this book. You can get it on Kindle. It's important if you're, if you're focused and you're thinking about magic. But just as a little teaser, you know, what are... So you talk about signs of an entity contact and people are fascinated with entities like, well, you know, isn't it elementals, a thought form, uh, that kind of thing. So first, like in your definition, what, what is an entity? Is it all of the above that I just previously spoke? Um, I could say it's, uh, spirits doing drag or it's, uh, in material essence, it's energy, it's, it's ephemeral energy and it, and it could look like, what we think of when we think of an entity, you know, something more imaginary and weird and abstract on the astral plane, or it could be just a spirit taking on the role with the vibration of the energy. Um, I think entities are feed off of our emotional states because our emotional states are energy. So um, uh, it's, it's kind of difficult on how to distinguish them uh, everyone has a different definition of an entity, but I would say their spirits doing drag or in material essence. Right. And some of the signs that you talk about are repeating numbers, newfound abilities. That's different, right? Things appearing out of nowhere, items moving around. I've had that happen before, but when That's you say so weird. it is weird, like you're like, I know I didn't move that, you know, <laughs> right? Like it can give you shivers. Yeah. Yeah. That happens. But what how do we know if this is good or bad like new because some of this stuff sounds good right newfound abilities but if it's yeah. an entity doing it then that's not good right well i think uh, if it's an angel you know it could just be one of your deceased relatives or ancestors or someone who, who's looking over you and um wants to channel and, and work with you and 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 not like in a psychic medium way, but I mean that, you know, your angels are most likely 
they want to help out. You know, they're in the spirit world. If, if they want to help out, um, they, 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 they'll, they'll figure out a way to, to make this a positive part of your path. So newfound abilities and repeating numbers and, and things moving around might just be a way of saying hello to us and, 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 oh, okay. and, and, and their way to engage with us. I think, you know, the darker form of entities is, you know, if you're making deals and, and things for instant gratification and talent and, and fame and all that kind of stuff that you want fast. And now, um, those, those entities feed off of insecurities and lust and, and hate and, and darker kind of emotions. And I, I kind of like a antichrist superstar feeling, you know, like that album, like those kind of type of energies, they would feed off of that. But, um, I would say angels giving you gifts is not a negative thing. Yeah. Like seeing repeating numbers. I used to not believe in that, by the way. I used to think, oh, that's just, that's a coincidence. But if you, of course it's a coincidence, right? I mean, come on, you tell in your mind that. But if you look at what, what the numbers mean and what the angel represents and stuff like that and what's actually happening in your life, that's when you realize that there's something real to it. And I, I know you talk about this too, is that it's important to keep a journal, you know, to journal this stuff, a dream journal. Cause I have to have a journal and a dream journal and you kind of talk about that too as well. Don't you? Yeah. Yeah. You know, a magical record and a, and a dream journal are, are great to have in, in the beginning days. Um, and I think that, I think that it's really important to, to, to do that and you don't have to do it in like a grimoire or, you know, a journal, a physical journal. It's Book of great shadows to do that. kind of thing, you know. You can, it is It is great to do that, but you can just make phone notes and do whatever, put in your email drafts or wherever you write on your computer or text edit. But um, I think um, it is good to just start to pay attention to the coincidences. You know, I would really, really, really recommend writing down the, the astrological moon transit of the day that you're doing the spell because I find that when I do spells, they they usually do manifest on the corresponding moon sign that I did the spell on. So if I do a spell on a Scorpio moon, full moon, I might receive it on a Scorpio waxing moon. Ah, I gotcha. Okay. So I'm thinking about doing, uh, I had some listeners uh, contact the show, and I want to just get your opinion on this. As I'm thinking about doing a meditation or a visualization of like, dissipating the coronavirus and the fear of it at the same time do you think doing that on the full moon would be the best time to do something like that yeah like if I we mean, get a bunch it, of audience it's members a virgo, involved it's a virgo full moon so that will on 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 monday so that would that would be nice for people to do and i do believe in the collective power of magic i think voting is a form of collective magic i, I see there as a kind of political magical war in our world right now and in many different senses but um i think if we set our intentions on on the same thing at the same time we can manifest it and i talk about that uh spell that they did in in london to to bind hitler from coming into Mm -hmm. um you know that one right Mm -hmm. yeah the yeah 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 and it's like and see that's the thing too is i think if if well see if we get a bunch of people that like say they develop this pop magic uh, idea, then I think it kind of makes it more powerful because now people are more open to uh, all sides of this thing. Cause you do, you kind of look at all sides of magic. And I wonder though, what are your, your views about like magical orders? Like, I don't know, Thelema or a lot of people join, you know, they start up little golden Dawn groups and stuff like that. Do you, uh, talk about that at all, or do you think that's a good idea? <clears throat> Excuse me. I talk about how I don't like hierarchies or dogma or people believing that they have more magical powers than you and assertive powers in which they can teach you them and make transactions and, and submission. I think that um, if you're doing a, something honoring the Lima or the Golden Dawn and, and you're not creating a hierarchical negative type of uh cult like order and you're doing it out of fandom and and respect to to it and it's a positive thing and there's nothing negative then yeah i would be okay with it but if it's just to kind of create a a religious order or control or hierarchy or dogma i would be against that 
for sure. No, it gets out of hand. I know it, uh, it like the Golden Dawn kind of developed their stuff after the Masons, and then you got you know the OTO. They took on a real Masonic thing, and you got all these different levels of it. But it's like if that's why I think so many people, Alex, want to know why you know. And I'm and we're circling back around here towards the end of our interview to why you wrote the book to begin with is, you know, you can read all this material, but you're never going to get that, the, these answers. Like how does magic work? How do I know my magic's working? Why am I doing this? What are the fundamental reasons of, of what's going on behind the scenes here? You know, it's almost like hieroglyphics. It's, it's, it's really, it's really difficult to decipher. And I, and, you know, I think I, I'm, I'm, I would really hope that, people would leave my book feeling like they have those type of things answered or, or they think, Oh, well, well, this actually kind of makes sense to practice, you know, rather than the experiences reading the more bloated books where you're kind of like, I, I don't even know how to, I'm reading this. I'm trying to follow it. I, I, I'm trying to decipher it, but is wasting my time analyzing it even going to give me uh, any idea of how to practice magic. And this is the kind of book where you kind of, are ready to practice from reading it. Like you can see that you can do it right away, whether it's with water in your kitchen, doing a protection spell or a candle spell, you know, it's a kind of, it's kind of about forcing yourself to get yourself out there and start practicing right away. That's really cool, man. And, and if, and I'm really, again, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Love to have you back, man. When you write that next book, because now I'm a fan and I want you to write more books, man. You got to keep doing this stuff for us. Thank you. Of course, I'll, I will definitely come back. And I, and I see a lot of magical things happening for you and in, in your future. And I'm sure things will get even crazier and bigger by then. Yeah. Yeah, they, they are actually, we're in actually in a transition phase now. So yeah, I hope you're right. And people can actually email you too, right? You have like a fan mail, like fan mail at alexkazemi.com. Uh, yeah, I I made it like a kind of late '90s type of email in which you can write me letters because I don't use any social media. And the book, uh, there's a chapter in the book called "You Are the Illuminati," and that is a lot about how to deprogram from social media and approval addiction in our culture. And um, I would encourage anyone to read that chapter if they're struggling with social media addiction or approval addiction in our culture. But yeah, I have fan mail at alexkazemi.com and you can email me just what you thought of the show or if you read the book, you know, it's available everywhere where books are sold, like Indigo in Canada, uh, Barnes and Nobles in America. So you or amazon.com you can find it wherever you want and i hope it helps you simon and schuster too yeah i'll put all the links in there too and it's been a real pleasure talking to you this has been an absolute pleasure having you on the show man thank you so much and it's been such a cool experience being here talking to you and, and it's such an honor to talk to you thank you so much you're very welcome you're very welcome all right guys that's the end of our interview i'll give you some final thoughts as we come up here on the last part of the show, Alex Kazemi, alexkazemi.com. Go check out the new book. I have a copy myself, right? Go get it, man. This is, this is the real deal, y'all. Pop Magic, a simple guide to bending your reality. We'll be right back. Stay with us. So... Charlton from Metaphorical Archaeology. If you've ever had a traumatic paranormal experience, the effects of it may stay with you for years. Uh, Who do you talk to? You can't go to conventional help. What we do is we use emotional freedom techniques or tapping to actually neutralize the effects of that event. Maybe when you tell the story now, your heart races and your palms get sweaty. You don't even want to think about it because you don't know how to neutralize that. That's what EFT tapping does. It neutralizes 
neutralizes those emotions. The circuit that that was recorded on is gone. The energy flows freely and you're free of it. And that's what emotional freedom is all about. We offer this as a pro bono service, but this is something that I offer because no one, it seems, is helping people with these experiences. If you'd like to reach me, it's really easy. My cell phone is 214-995-3754. Please leave a message. I will get back to you as quickly as possible. Or you can email me, barb.eft at gmail.com. And EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques. Reach out to me. It's confidential. This works. You won't believe the results. Hey, this check is wrong. I worked a holiday and seven hours of overtime. Not getting paid correctly is a real pain. It could also hurt our boss if our company provides out of compliance checks. That's right. Construction companies doing business with the government can get fined, or officials of the companies can go to jail if the checks aren't right. It's a law. The Davis Bacon Act has 30 compliance issues for every check, but there is an easy way for construction companies to be in compliance. EMARS offers Compliant Client, a web based system that finds and corrects all 30 of the possible out of compliance check issues. Users of Compliant Client report an 80% savings in time and money. Running a weekly payroll usually takes about five minutes. All 15,000 plus clients of EMARS have never had a legal compliance issue. Plus, they sleep better on check day. Contact EMARS at emarsinc.com or call 480-595-0466. All right, man, this is Crow777, and you are listening to The Fringe FM. Right, me old chiners. I know it's an ad break, but before you lot shoot off and make yourself a cup of Rosie Lee or whatever else it is you're going to sling down your Gregory Peck, you need to listen to me bubble. If, like me, you found your way to light in the void via a downloadable podcast, you might want to take a butcher's at the Fringe FM Wind and Kite. You won't, Adam and Eve, how many other shows there are or what they rabbit on about. Ancient history, conspiracy, the consciousness, the esoteric, the occult, metaphysics, parapolitical, ufology, technology, Technology and spirituality to name but a few. They got featured hosts like Ryan Gable, Jeremy Scott, Alex Exum, Tim Doyle, Cortana and Gigi, Susanna Ross, the Reverend John Polk, Michael Deacon and J.D. Lewis. You might find yourself listening to the thoughts and theories of the author of The Fish you just finished reading. Or you could pick up the dog and bone, call in and tell everyone your own beliefs or experiences. So do me a favour, before you put on the ansel or crack open a bottle of Vino or roller joint, go to the Fringe FM and see what you're missing. From a cave in the depths of your mind, it's Lighting the Void with Joe Root. The Fringe FM isn't just a radio station. We also provide services for all your audio production needs. If you are interested in live radio or pre-recorded podcasts, we're here to help. We even do audio enhancements and voiceovers if needed. If you want to do a podcast or live radio show and even want the option to syndicate on terrestrial radio from simple audio file enhancement to live production and call screening, we have you covered. We have worked with some of the best professionals in the business in order to provide coaching instruction for content creation, show structure, and more. Contact The Fringe Digital Media for more at info at thefringe.fm. That's info at thefringe.fm. Or call 501-777-5631 for a consultation. Hey, I'm J.M. DeBoard, and when I want to talk about dreams, I look up my man Joe Root and his show, Lighting the Void. Alex Kazemi for coming on the broadcast his book Pop Magic A Simple Guide to Bending Your Reality it's a good book and I know a lot of you guys uh, you ask me about what books to read and uh, stuff like that and we've had a lot of authors on here but I mean 
If you're like me and you're interested in how this stuff works and you want to get down to the fundamentals, not to mention there is a pretty good guide in here on how to practice magic, and it gets into everything and all things, too. It's very informative. It's a good book, and uh, you'll be able to catch him tomorrow night, too, if you want. It's on Coast to Coast. He'll be on there pretty quick. That's pretty impressive if you get to Coast to Coast that fast. And uh, he did say, well, you know, everything in my life now, his success is attributed to magic, and I think that's fantastic. But I, I do want to really stress this thing about, I know I've already talked about it, but I want to stress this thing about the fear that we have about the coronavirus. I cannot stress this enough because, because well, I'm going to be honest with you, because it's kind of tempting me to. I'm very tempted to be afraid of what's going on, but I know deep down in my heart, that it's not going to make it any better. The fear is going to make it worse. And so, just like I was stating before, any time that I would, you know, become aware of fear, I tend to attack it. And I think I'm going to attack it this way. And I would like all of you guys to participate with me, as many of you as you can, on the next full moon. I would like to do a meditation live on the air. Uh and I don't really know how I'm going to structure this yet. And I got this idea from a listener that called in about it. He called in and, and told me that he was listening to the show. <laughs> Funny enough, he was listening to the show on a night that we were just doing the Halloween replay. But for the first 30 minutes, I'd asked, well, you know, when should we do this meditation to dissipate the coronavirus? Two things. Watch it dissipate, visualizing it going away, and especially everyone's fear of it. So here's the call. Hello, Joe. Uh, I was listening to your show the other day, and you kind of had a question um, for best time for meditating. Um, best best time for doing the meditating, especially group meditation, is during the full moon. That's when uh, everything is most powerful. Um, and uh, I love your show, man. My name is Frank Utrera, Francisco P. Utrera, Jr., 586-569-6601. Anyways, so here's the thing. I wanted to do this. Like, I didn't know his phone numbers, and I don't have to race that for the podcast. But here's the thing. Like, uh, Daryl's asking, why wait? I'm not telling you to wait. I think right now it would be a good time to for all of us to meditate and focus and do visualizations and things like that on dissipating the fear and all of that. But there's a lot of power. There's been so many experiments where people have done this and there's a lot of power when everybody does it at the same time, synchronistically. So I got to figure out when and what time on the broadcast we're going to do it. We might do it at the beginning. Uh, I don't know. I got to figure out who's going to be on that night, that kind of thing. But I want to do this because I want to see, just how powerful it is. And I want, honestly, as many people to get involved. I don't care if other radio stations get involved. I don't care. Let's spread the word. Let's try to get this thing going to where we can actually tap into the human potential and get rid of this. Because, honestly, it's not going to stop. If I'm, if I'm going to be completely honest with you, and I'm not trying to scare you even more, but I just want to let you know what's coming. I mean, you know it's coming, right? More cases are going to come out. For all we know, the way this thing works, there's probably tons of people walking around right now carrying this thing. So by the time we get the news that it's a confirmed case, the numbers are bigger. And see, I'm trying to be real careful about what I'm saying here. Now, a skeptic would say, well, it's science. What you're saying is a woo-woo. But I really believe, like, this is one of those times where we might actually learn our potential and understand that, that we can either make or break the situation. This is one of those times because I do feel like we're coming into these, um, I don't want to say end times, but more crazy things are happening, like bigger things that are happening bigger diseases, bigger outbreaks, you know, not too long ago, we had tsunamis just wiping people out, you know, um, we've got the locust thing going on. Time feels like it's speeding up. Everybody talks about that. So 
it's not and it's like as i say the words i can feel like this thing in my head wanting to be afraid of it but this is the time that you tap into your power that we can all do something for once where we're not alone you don't have to be afraid alone and i don't think you're a bad person if you're afraid of it it's natural to be afraid of these types of things it's natural to go out and prepare and buy a bunch of stuff you know so you don't so you have a whole bunch of stuff for your family Yeah, I think uh, Patrick just uh, messaged me. So he thinks Jason Layton is on to do the Monday. So that would be actually good because he's a hypnotist. That would be perfect. We might actually have him guide it. Thanks, Pacho. I appreciate that, brother. But you got to take the negative and, and turn it into a good thing. So when devastating things like this happen, instead of running from it and being afraid and all this stuff, what I'm saying is, is we can use it as an opportunity to tap in and just see what our potential is. Let's see if we're really right about all this woo woo stuff. I'm not saying prove it to the skeptics, but it would be nice. It would be nice to show them that there is something about visualization, focus on your emotion Everybody doing it all at once, watching it go away, watching people not be afraid of it. I'll give you an example, right? When 9-11 first happened, it was one of those things where there was a, a fear response at first, right? Everyone saw that. The, the fear response, I remember going uh, home and leaving work early because everybody was at the gas stations and there were gas stations that were jacking the prices up and you know, I was out there, I was working on construction, actually, framing houses. And I was back, I was in shape, too, I remember. I was good, I was tan and really in shape. And he comes pulling up to the job site, and he says, you know, everybody needs to go get their money out of their, I mean, he was freaked out. Everybody, is, it's his birthday today, too. Happy birthday, Uncle Ted. But everybody needs to go to the bank and get their money out and, you know, go fill up your truck full of gas right now because... The world's coming to an end. Things are getting bad. He said something like that. And I'm standing on top of a roof. And we're all just kind of looking at each other. All of the guys on the job site thinking, what the hell? Sure enough, I have, I had no idea that the planes had hit or anything. So sure enough, I get in the truck. I drive out of the suburb where we're building on these houses. I come up to the stoplight and there are every gas station at every corner is jam packed full of cars. And you're watching this just chaos happen. Everybody is in fear and it's every man for themselves kind of thing. Um, and you know, I think I was 19 at the time, so I, I wasn't really a spiritual person. So of course I'm doing that too. You know, I'm going to go fill my truck up full of gas. I'm going to get home first place i went to was my grandmother's house because i was worried about them and they're watching the tv just afraid and they're watching the planes hit the building over and over again and the news is showing you know how the news does that it's like there's the plane there's another one and these people are actually dying you know they're not really thinking about the people and stuff but the news is making sure because that's what they have to do is just keep showing you that image of that plane hitting that building over and over again and nothing changed. I mean, everything got worse, right? Everything got worse until people started getting angry and emotional until the president came out and had a speech about, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to lay down or you're not going to scare us. So it took everybody to have to like transmute that fear into anger and to revenge. And of course, we all know how that worked out. But things started getting better. The city came together to clean up. Like New York was one of those places where everybody would just, you know, shrug you, uh, shrug you off and not talk to you. But now all of a sudden they're all friendly. I think they're back to that way, by the way. But for a moment, they were all working together. I think if we could see something like this coming, even if you don't believe in magic, we can still cut it off by cutting the fear off. By everybody doing a visualization on the full moon, like the caller talked about when he called in, at the same time, 
and focusing our emotions on love and health and things like that and watching it just disappear. And with Jason coming on, it'll really work. But to me, it's like, now that I understand these these metaphysical principles, this fundamental metaphysical principle that I know is true, I almost want the people that are unsure about it to do it as an experiment. Because what will happen? Like, if we do enough global, I don't even say global, but if we do enough large experiments with people, metaphysical experiments like this, people start seeing that there's something to it. You don't have to have proof. You don't have to get a magnifying glass and measure it with something like Neil deGrasse Tyson wants. You just know that it works. Then we can stop anything from happening. We could turn this around. I truly believe that. Because on the other side of that figure eight that I talk about, there is this world that's kind of like the software that's running this physical world. And we can stop this stuff from happening. Think about it, man. I don't want to give you like bad examples, but if you, if you cut yourself like a, there's two types of people. Okay. And I don't know which category you fall into, but let's say you cut yourself and you start bleeding and you cut, I'm telling you, let's say you cut a big artery. And from my experience, there's two types of people out there. There's certain, there's people that will panic and scream until they bleed to death and someone comes along and helps them. And then there's the other type of person who realizes, you know, they see the problem coming. They register it in their head. They stay calm and they go, okay, if I don't cut this off, if I don't stop this bleeding, I'm going to die. And they focus on the problem. Magic and metaphysics and spirituality is like the one thing that we have where we can cut it off before it gets to that level, though. Even if you don't believe in it, wouldn't you want to kind of like test that? Right? Even if you're not a magical person, even if let's just say you're religious and you're Christian, wouldn't you want to use prayer and visualization and however you want to do it? We should all do it together. Because down here in the South, when things get out of hand, I'm telling you, we're probably going to be the last one standing because everybody's got every, I mean, out here, we really don't need to prep unless the water's, you know, like full of radiation or something. We'll, we'll survive. Pretty much everybody around here is worried about running out of bullets kind of thing. You know, we, we can cut this off. And you have to know that the reason why they're doing this stuff is, you know, I'm not a conspiracy guy, but it's kind of obvious. Like they do, they hype this stuff up. There's companies that control the media. I mean, look, run the numbers, folks. Like do the research. Look at the regular flu. Look at like just the flu, not even SARS or anything like that. Like look at the flu. Look how many people get it. Look how many people die from it every year. Then look at this thing. The only thing, the only reason why this is freaking people out is because they they can't stop it it's killing people a little bit more and they don't know where it's coming from but they're really hyping it up now why are they doing that and it's election time by the way funny for you know so they're really hyping it up so you can go out there and then panic and buy a bunch of stuff and then once they say you know the world's going to come to an end and unless we have this magical vaccine that comes out you know that's coming then they're going to make it mandatory So when I was a kid, like, this is kind of like what it reminds me of. When I was a kid, I remember I cut my finger on glass. And it was, the reason why I remember is because my dad kind of popped me in the head a little bit. Because it was bleeding like crazy, man. It was just bleeding. And my, I was like, dad, you know, my finger's bleeding. I don't know, I remember kind of, that was one of those faint memories as a toddler. And he kind of just looked at me and he kind of popped me in the head. He never really smacked me. Or smack me across the face really hard. He would just kind of give you that bump in the back of the head, like pop. And he looked at me and he was like, Well, you got two choices. You know, you can stand there and bleed to death or just clean it and fix it. What are you going to do? And I couldn't understand, like, why he didn't care. One of those things, like, Why don't you care that I'm bleeding? 
why are you talking to me about logic? I just want you to care. But he was trying to teach me something. And, you know, my father doesn't believe in, he believes in, uh, like, haints. He calls the spirit world haints. But he doesn't believe in what I'm talking about. But I understand. I understood what he was trying to teach me. And then I, I grew up and I see this happen to people, you know, like people panic. There's two types of people. They panic or they fix the problem. Panic or fix the problem. You got two choices. That's it. Uh, I don't think I have time to tell you about how I almost died at Hurricane Creek one time. But because I didn't panic, I lived. And it's like, I think we should do this. Instead of panicking, we should just focus all our intention and magic when this full moon comes. So I'll make sure that we get some kind of, I'll probably get with Jason and figure out how we're going to do this. But I don't care if you believe in magic, if you believe in God, whatever you believe in, what, whatever your spirituality is, I want you to do this with us and just see what happens. It can't hurt anything because I damn sure don't want to stand around and talk about it and freak out and then keep talking about it and keep freaking out and keep feeding the fear and then manifest it even more. I mean, if there's any day traders listening to the show, you guys know what I'm talking about. You know, like when stocks fall, they fall hard and fast, right? And when things rise, they kind of have a little heel. You know, fear is powerful. It's That's what when Darth Vader was talking about, you know, you don't know the power of the dark side. It's because it's faster and it's more powerful and, it, and it's, not mo- it's not the most powerful. It's just faster. It's more perpetual. That's what dark magic and dark stuff is all about. Works faster, right? Happens quicker. Gives you instant justification kind of thing. Or instant gratification, not justification. Well, it could be justification. I guess what I'm trying to say is, because I'm rambling here, is that I know all of you are are afraid of this stuff. I, I have a little fear in my head about it, too. We all do. It's rational. It doesn't make you a bad person or a weak person spiritually or whatever. But it's time that we understand how our fear is manifesting things and making it worse. I I mean, really think about it, man. Think about your life, all of the things that you've worried about, that you obsess over and worry about. They come to life. That should tell you enough. We got to flip the script. We got to change the game. We got to make things that we want and ask ourselves, how good can it get? And make that happen faster. That's how we beat the dark side, man. But we're not going to change the world here at Lighting the Void. So we can just start with our community. And if other people want to join and help us, that's great. I'll try to get something up. I'll probably get with Jason this week. Try to get something up about it. And maybe push out a flyer or, or something. So we can get more people involved with it. And, uh... Before we get out of here, too, I do want to say, like, our archives of all of the, well, all of the shows that get produced by the Fringe FM are on SoundCloud now. So, Lighting the Void is on SoundCloud. Real Talk is on SoundCloud. Um, Surviving the System. There's a bunch of shows over there. So, if you love using SoundCloud, then we're over there, too. I haven't really talked about that much. Sorry about that. And also that we're going to be at the Ozark Conference as long as the world doesn't come to an end, we'll be at the Ozark conference in April, the weekend of April the 10th, I believe it's the Easter weekend. And, uh, I want you guys to come out and hang out with us, man. If you're around, come see us, come hang out at the booth. We'll put you on the air, that kind of thing. It's fun to do. That is a fine place to be. And probably one of the safest places. If you want to, if you do want to give into fear, about you know the coronavirus that's probably one of the safest places to be because it's towards the middle of the country way up in the mountains and those people don't really get on you know go places and whatever you know, i'm gonna start talking bad about arkansas folks i gotta be careful but yeah come out and see us come hang out with us tomorrow night james keenan is going to be on the program then friday night we're going to have uh Friday night is, oh yeah, Jeff Harmon's coming on. It's been a long time since we've had him on here. Yeah, it's going to be a cool week. I hope you guys call in. I hope to hear from you. The Secret Teachings is coming up next with Ryan Gable. And uh, yeah, we're going to go ahead 
and get out of here, I think. I do want to thank Pacho for making this happen, though, man. Pacho, brother, you are like a godsend, dude. You're making stuff happen bigger and better and faster. And uh, I don't know what I'd do without you, man. So please, please don't copy the show without written permission. Music was by Chronox. We're also going to be playing music by Steezy Stevie from here on out as well. I want to thank my producer, P- Pacho, Jeremy Scott, Amanda, Barbara, Eric Markham. I love all of you guys on the Fringe FM chat too. We'll see you guys tomorrow night. Same time, same channel. Stay tuned for the secret teachings. Good night.